Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. It's good to have you with us. I'm your host, Jim Masters, and this is the Jim Masters Show Live, just like the music in the intro said. Good evening, welcome from wherever you are, or good morning, or good day. Depends on what time zone you're in. I know we reach an international audience of uh, friends and lovety viewers who watch from literally all around the world. It's a pleasure to have you here, and I hope your day is going well. If it isn't, well, you know, this is the place for a light love and levity, or as we call it, levity here on the Gym Masters Show Live, entertainment lifestyle talk show series, where we do something different every day and we put smiles on your face, we inform, educate, entertain, and have a few laughs along the way. How have you been doing? We were off yesterday because I was busy on the air with the uh, inauguration coverage. And uh, we say congratulations to President Biden and uh, uh, Kamal Harris as well, our vice president, and we hope for peace and uh, unity and uh, positivity going forward. And everybody around the world who's been saying the same, we congratulate everybody and we look forward with a new day and a new beginning. We toast all of you and you and you and you, and we welcome you from all around the world. We have an audience of uh, lovely viewers who watch from the United States, Canada, Mexico, Europe, Asia, Australia. Uh, it is amazing where they come from, Japan, New Zealand, Switzerland, you name it. We've even had viewers from Iceland, which is amazing. So we toast all of you. Hmm. Nice and nice. And uh, how's everybody doing? We see a lot of comments coming in already. We've got a phenomenal guest who is joining me live. The extraordinary singer and actress, Julie Budd, a legend in the industry. She's worked with some of the greats. Uh, she's beloved and uh, she's a, a big fan of the Gym Masters show live, actually. She was telling me she's watched some previous episodes. We have over, I think, close to 240 episodes of the Gym Masters show live, which we launched um, almost a year ago, a couple of months, it'll be a year ago. And this is uh, born out of my work in television and radio and multimedia as a TV and radio personality, presenter, host, journalist, actor, writer, producer, stage MC, voiceover artist, And uh, it's been day in, day, out, day in and day out of incredible shows. Uh, sometimes we do even two shows a day if we have guests who are in other parts of the world. So we will sort of adjust our time to match when they are available. So sometimes in the weekends, we've done two shows in the course of one day. Uh, like this past weekend, we had two shows on uh, the weekend, uh, two on Saturday, one in the afternoon and one in the evening, and then another one on Sunday. So we had three shows. Hey, while uh, we weren't here yesterday, as rare as that is because of the inauguration, somebody had a birthday. We're going to sing happy birthday to him later. Yes, our friend George Burns' birthday was yesterday. That's right. And he's one of our regular cast of characters here on the Gym Master Show Live. So he's uh, been glowing and basking in the glow of the birthday with his cigar and uh, birthday cake, I believe, uh, probably up in heaven. But as far as we know, he's right here with us, right? So we'll say a happy birthday to George a little bit later on the show. How is everybody? Let's check in with some of our lovely viewers from around the world. Again, we've got a wonderful guest uh, that's all excited to be here. We're excited to be here. And again, she's uh, she told everybody about our show and uh, she said, people love the Gym Master Show live, people in the industry and all around. And I'm happy to hear that. That's a, a real blessing. Reporting live from the Netherlands. Willie is here. Good evening, Jim and Lovities. Thank you, Willie. And Willie in the Netherlands says, I want to congratulate you on your new president and may he run the country well. That is our hope as well. And we thank you for that, Willie. Mary Bishop in Florida. Hello, Jim, Lovity friends, and Julie at work, but we'll catch up with all of you later. Fantastic. And of course, I welcome you uh, watching in all the platforms as well. Kathy Short. Cleveland reporting for duty, Cleveland, Ohio. Good evening, Jim and Lovities. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We sure are. Dennis Ritz is here. Hello, Jim. Looking forward to seeing you and the incomparable Julie Bud. Have fun. Thanks, Dennis. We'll be putting on the Ritz tonight, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, good to have you with us. Uh, you're on our YouTube channel, and we would hope if you would subscribe to the channel. That uh, helps us big time. And click the notification bell. We've got amazing guests all the time. Good to see you, and welcome, Dennis. Hello, Jim and everyone. Hope it's been a terrific Thursday for all. Ann Wozniak, thank you for joining us, and It's good to see you as well. Another friend, dear friend personally, as well as somebody who was a guest on our show, is another incomparable person. Bobby Horowitz is here. So thrilled to be here.
here to see Julie, but of course, I'm also glad to see Jim Masters. I like that. <laughs> I consider him to be my friend as well as a talented host. Uh, is there a way we can print that one out and I can put it on the highway billboards perhaps? Uh, no, I can't print it. Just look at it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. I appreciate that. It's good to see you. Bruce H is here saying hi all. He's watching on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. Lots of comments here. Lots of people tuning in. We love that. Claudio Barto says, hello, good to see you. Joy Lorenzo is here. And, and there's a connection you said that you have with Julie Budd. I, if, I don't know if you want to post it or share that with us. There was something where you, somebody that you know knows her. There's a relation, Joy Lorenzo in New York. Let us know about that. And it's good to see you. And little Connor, Connor is with you in the photo, right? Uh, Merlin, Ontario, Canada is here. Hello, Jim and all the loveties and uh, our new president, the very first person that he's gonna be talking to as far as foreign diplomats will be your leader, Trudeau, tomorrow. That's the first call and that makes sense because that's our neighbors to the north who we love in Canada. Good to see you, Merlin and Karen Campbell Green, also in Canada, Nova Scotia. Good Thursday evening, Jim and all my lovely family. Good to see you as well. Nice to see everybody here. Joy Lorenzo, hello to everyone tonight. It's good to see you. Uh, here on the show. Hope everyone has been doing okay. You too, Jim. Happy Thursday. Thank you very much. And Juanita in South Africa, once again, one of our lovely viewers. Hello, Jim and everyone. Hope you had a great day yesterday. We sure did. It was very busy with the inauguration and everything. Um, quite a day, quite a day. Uh, Kathleen Walker, New York City. Hi, Jim. Hope all is well there. Hi, everyone. Sending lovely to all, to all. And, um, Congratulations from Karen in Nova Scotia, new president, new vice president. Absolutely. Yeah, even Iceland. We are waiting for Antarctica. We haven't had any, you know, but anybody check in saying they're from Antarctica yet, but we've had Iceland as well. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. Uh, really cool stuff. Uh, speaking of which, uh, South Africa and uh, not South Africa. We have South Africa, Juanita, South America. Brazil checking in. Carla, hello, Carla. Good to see you and welcome. Hi, Jim and gang and toast to all of you. Thank you very much, Carla. Very happy day here. And nice to see you there in South America and beautiful Brazil. We love it. Bobby Hartz, yes. I <laughs> love George and Gracie. Happy birthday to George Burns. Yes, yesterday was his birthday. So we'll have to sing happy birthday to him. Anne says, welcome, Julie, to the land of Lovity. I already told her all about Lovity and she loves it. She's in on the whole Lovity thing. Lovity Hall, Mr. Lovity, the Lovity viewers, uh, which just happened by accident. Uh, happy National Hug Day. Oh, Hug Day. Okay, so let's do a big virtual hug, everybody. Squeeze in, squeeze in. All right, come on, come on. All right, we got gotcha. you. There you go. And welcome singer actress Julie Budd to the show tonight. Absolutely. A matter of fact, uh, let's welcome her now so we can uh, get the chat in and chat more. We've got music. We've got all kinds of incredible things. What a stunning photo that is, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, beautiful inside and out and extraordinarily talented. One of the most exciting singers in music today. Since her career be uh, began, she has been appearing on some of the most prestigious stages in the world and alongside some of the most illustrious stars in performance history. This unique experience coupled with her own dazzling musical gifts provide Julie with a rare opportunity of bringing something fresh and something legendary to every song she sings. Julie brings heart to her music, making her the quintessential singer of our day and earning Julie her very own musical legacy. While enjoying a celebrated and multifaceted career in music, Julie's credits also include television, film, New York City concert halls, theatrical stages, as well as appearing with some of the greatest symphony orchestras throughout the world, country, and the world. The New York Times has raved in a glowing full two-page retrospective, declaring Julie Budd the consummate performer, and indeed she is, winner of Broadway World Award, best show, they wrote the songs, artists and residents as well. She began her professional career at the tender age of 12, that's right, uh, winning a talent show while vacationing with her family. In the audience was renowned producer, orchestrator Herb Bernstein, who recorded some of the greatest artists uh, ever known to music. And uh, she's had a wonderful relationship with him as well. And 
What's also great too, Bernstein was also recording the eminent talk show host. You know, we talk about Merv Griffin on this show, TV talk show is Merv Griffin. Herb immediately took Julie under his wing and introduced her to Merv at a recording session in New York City. And there, as legend would have it and fate would follow, he heard her sing this mini girl with a maxi voice and invited her to appear on the Merv Griffin show. Um, she's, she's been on all the shows, the Carol Burnett show, the Eds and you know, I've my love for Carol and I had an opportunity to chat with Carol and meet her. She's phenomenal. The Ed Sullivan show tonight's show with Johnny Carson. She's worked with Frank Sinatra, Danny Thomas, Joan Rivers, Liberace, just to name a few. I'll let her tell you about some of the rest, but it's absolutely amazing. You know how we talk about the Gym Master Show live, bringing back the lost art of conversation and that this show is a little bit like Dick Cavett, Dick Clark, Griffin, Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, Johnny Carson, Steve Allen, with the modern sensibilities of today. Uh, Julie knows about that because she's had an opportunity to sit on some of those couches, uh, those talk shows with some of the greats. Let's welcome her to our show. It's a real honor. Julie, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hi, everybody. How are you? Lovity, right? Lovity. Lovity. <laughs> <laughs> lovity and lovity what's going on in our country right now yes yes some peace and tranquility and positive <laughs> vibes which it's just uh, so wonderful it's really it's wonderful and it seems like the world is uh, taking a, a, a little bit of a breather too and celebrating, which is nice. We really, you know, uh, we need some positivity because we've got some big problems and hurdles that we got to, and challenges with COVID and everything else to, to still wrangle with. So better to wrangle with it when we're all united and together as much as we can be than, you know, everybody on corners uh, looking at each other. Um, Anne says, welcome, Julie, to the land of lovity. And, uh, Hello, Anne. Hi, everybody. Do you know, you mentioned that today was George Burns' birthday. Yesterday, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yesterday. Well, I used to work with George. <laughs> Do you have I, a George I story? Love, God, I have so many. I just love George. George was, to me, he was eternal, you know. It, it, I remember the day that George passed, I couldn't believe it because I never thought that George would ever pass. You know, no. it, it was as if he was always here and he always would be here. And um, he didn't really have an age. You know, everybody no. always talked about the fact that George had this resurgence in his senior years, you know. When he played God too, remember? Yeah, yeah. I, I just loved him. Herbie loved him. Herbie Bernstein, yeah. my conductor. Oh, he, and he loved Herbie. Herbie wound up conducting for him. And uh, it was just, it was a great time. I, it was really a great time. And uh, I miss do you, him. Do you really verify do. everything she said? Yes, I do. He verifies everything. <laughs> <laughs> Georgie was great. Georgie was fun. Do you want to uh, join me in singing him a quick happy birthday together with me? I'm going to sing a happy birthday. For Only birthday. if you give me a cigar. Can you reach in and grab the one he's got? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell you a funny Georgie story. I I was in California and I was I was with George and Herbie was with me. He was conducting for the two of us. And we were playing the Orange County Performing Arts Center. A beautiful, beautiful hall. Just exquisite. And the place was packed. And um, I was just thrilled to be there. And I wanted to make sure, you know, I, you know, really sure. worked on the show. This I wanted place, it to yeah. be right. So right before the show, I go to Georgie's dressing room. I knock on the door. I like how you call him Georgie. That's cute. Georgie. I always called him Georgie. And I, and I, and I knock on the door. And he goes, come on in. I go, all right, all right. And, and he goes, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I go, okay, okay, I'm not coming in yet, okay. He goes, ah, damn it, come in. And I come in, and he's got the tux jacket on, the tux shirt, the tie, and no pants. <laughs> and that's like a comic thing. They never walk out with their pants on until like right before they go on stage because they're sitting around all night, and they don't want creases in their slacks. So he threw his slacks over his 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 bottom torso, you know that part, and and he had like these uh, socks on that little things held them up or something. I don't know. It was very <laughs> funny. And I said, Georgie, I don't mean to disturb you. And like I felt funny, you know, because 
you know, he was only like half dressed. And I went, Georgie, I don't mean to bother you. I said, but uh, how much time do you want me to do? I just want to double check that I'm not doing too much time. Right. You know, so, you know, he said, ah, sing till you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> sing till you're finished. Sing I said, Georgie, what finished. does that mean? He says, Julie, you're going to know when it's time to get off. And he says, I, I just know you. You're going to be fine. So I wanted something specific. So I said, Georgie, what? 35, 40, 30, 35. What do you want? He goes, sweetie, I trust you. And he was like the only person I ever worked with that just, well, you know, Mr. Sinatra was kind of that way. But, you know, George was great because, you know, if he trusted you, you just do what you're doing. You know when it's working. You know when it's not working. You know when to say goodnight. And it was working. And he was right. And that's the key word. He trusted you. He had he faith trusted and me. trust in you. He knew you were yeah. talented and you wanted to do something that really made a big difference and people would really connect with. So, you know, it's. Uh, he was a very cool. dear man. He was a really nice man. Mm -hmm. And he had a lot of heart, you know. He was a character, though. He was really a character. I can verify that he's got his pants on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was so funny. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, like I didn't want to look, you know. <laughs> That's it. Well, let's sing him a quick. Let's sing him "Happy Birthday." You want to do that with me? Okay. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday. Is there a delay? Happy <laughs> birthday to you. Happy you birthday, birthday, my Georgie. Georgie. <laughs> I should uh, really find my picture of Georgie. Happy, yeah, happy birthday. birthday. I have one. Oh, great. Day yeah. to you. To you want me to go to get it? That would be should excellent. Get it? You want me to get it? Okay, I'll be yeah. right. Give me two yeah. seconds, okay? Oh, yeah. I'll be they right wanna... back. No. <laughs> Hold on. I'll be right no, back. No, no. Right no, there's a, whole, there's a whole running thing with this show. All the viewers like to see the chair that the guest is sitting in and hold it. <laughs> okay. Okay, I got my Georgie that's, picture. That's Hold not on. Just a chair. That's a beautiful sofa. Thank see, you so much. I okay, love to so. see the chair. I don't know. Are you going to be able to see this? Oh, let's see. We'll make it a big picture. And let's see. <laughs> if, if you hold it up a little higher. How about that? A little bit higher. Uh, right about there. And then uh, move it a little bit to the closer to the screen. There you go. Now hold it there. Go to the right a little bit. Right there and freeze, maybe back a little. That should be good. And let's see. Wow, that's a great shot. Can you see it? Yeah. When yeah. was that? This was here in New York City. We were, it was at a recording studio. And um, I was going into the studio and Georgie was going into the studio. And he was doing, I think it was a... A country album? Could it have been a country yeah. album? Yeah. That's, yeah. And he said, get over here and, and take a picture with me. And I said, <laughs> yeah. And I said, I said, Georgie, only if you give me a cigar. And he gave me a cigar. And if you noticed, I'm holding a cigar. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> you can verify that? Yes. He verifies it. <laughs> I love him. Well, well, we'll put you over I here, loved George. I love him. George is all set because George has, you know, everything he needs. So, you know what happens? I, I have this here to the side and somehow this cigar that he has, I think he presses a button and becomes a siphon because I go to reach for this glass by the end of the show, it's empty. And I don't know how that happens. I think his cigar is a siphon. <laughs> so we're gonna put him here. He's now basking in the glow of Jim Masters and Julie Bud singing him. Happy birthday, live on our show, which was a world premiere, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he He's was the nicest. Happy. He was a very sweet man, and, and he was he could be a real good pal. He really could be. Kathleen but Walker, he was impossible for poor Herbie when, when Herbie would conduct for him, because, you know, like, Herbie would hit an arpeggio, and, you know, downbeat, and then Herbie would try to find tempo. You could never find tempo with George, because mm. he'd go, the girl, da -da 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 -da. you know, it's kind of like singing with Groucho Marx. You can't find the time. You just have to hope that you get in there with them. Get it. They, they sort of just take off on their own, you know. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs>
Not for the conductor. Not for the conductor. (laughs) Not for the conductor. conductor. They end up losing a lot of hair. (laughs) Well, a lot of people, uh, Kathleen's saying great photo, Lucky and Merlin. She's in New York and Merlin saying nice photo as well. Bobby Horowitz loves that shot. Karen in Nova Scotia saying uh, what a beautiful photo. Lovely couch. They love your couch. (laughs) And uh, a couch and an amazing wall. Tell us about the. I, I always uh, usually this do it. A- this is this piece that you're looking at at the yeah. wall. Is that what you mean? Yeah. This is it's a mural from Italy. It's a big, big, huge mural. It goes all the way up to the ceiling and all the way out to the other side of the wall. It's huge, and it's an all hand painted piece of leather, on um, on a mural. I should probably get out of the way so you could see it. <clears throat> Can you see it? Very yeah. nice. Very, very yeah, it is, nice. It is. It's. It's, and, it's. It was actually painted in Florence. Is that so? Is that your living room? What you're in right now? Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. They love your couch too. They like the. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank they, you. They love it. Uh, these are all great George stories, Julie. Thanks. And uh, you're now a lovety. Oh, Welcome to Future Master Show Live. You're now a lovety. <laughs> Happy you could join us tonight. That's Christine Clifton. And uh, Bobby says, I'm so thrilled to see Julie, but I remember how kind you were. You walked out on I walked out of a cabaret show and spoke with people who totally looked up to you who were in the lobby after the show. Yeah, that's nice. You like Bobby's doing that, right? Very, do you know Bobby? Bobby is. Oh lovely. yeah, she's a dear friend. Yeah, I yeah, actually Bobby's met Bobby so through my friend June Rachelson Aspa, and also David Friedman and Sean Moniger. That's how we all met. So we're all friends in that group. Sure, yeah. of course, of course. Yeah. Have you have you ever worked with David at all, Friedman? No, I haven't had the pleasure. You know, maybe we've done things on some benefits together that Probably. I can remember. Yeah. You know, yeah. but David, David is so gifted and he's such a love. Very talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very talented. He's been, he's been very big with the uh, kindness. We can be kind and a lot of things involving kindness and uh, oh, yeah, love. Be right. We were, li- you know, for a while, things were very, very harsh out there. You know, I kind of got the feeling today that everything is just getting more reasonable and calmer. Right, exactly. I woke up with this feeling of things are all of a sudden sort of reasonable and calm. And everybody's like, you know, it's a terrible thing with COVID and we're all yeah. scared to death. But you know what? It's it, all of a sudden everything's sort of reasonable and calm. It was it was like, what's, I woke up this morning, I said, what's missing? I said, the nervousness. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's amazing. Uh, I've heard a couple of people say <laughs> just what you just said. There's like this, this sense of calm and uh, a, a reasonableness. Also, I've heard some people say there's also a post, post-traumatic stress disorder. Like some people are still like numb and sort of like coming out of what, everybody has gone through they're still like well, I think people are people were very angry for a very long time people don't like to feel helpless and hopeless especially when they're aware of what's going on they know what has to be done and nothing is happening you know it creates a lot of anxiety and anger and i think that people are just sort of getting over that now but you know what they will get over it and they're going to enjoy that things Look, you know, look, we're not the only country in the world that has a lot to do right now. This is a world pandemic. This is not just happening here. This is happening everywhere. You know, you can't you can't travel anywhere. You can't go anywhere where on on some level a nation is not dealing with this awfulness. And um, so it's not just our country. You know, it's happening. People people forget it's happening all over the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we got to be unified and (laughs) together and, and music and the arts and, uh, you know, to to be very healing. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. But to, to, to really focus on how important the arts really are, look what our world is like without it. Just it's, it's like, it's a, it's a, a blah void. 
It's mm-hmm. without, you know, and we're all yeah. trying to create in our own way. It's, people are so resourceful. You know, I've really been um, so proud of the human race through this because yeah. I've seen, it's really I don't know, good. What, well, how, how good people are and how resourceful they have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really take my hat off to the people who have businesses and how they have kept it afloat. I yes. swear, I, I I get up in the morning sometime and I make my breakfast and I go out on my porch and I sit and I go, I'm so lucky. I made breakfast. I'm sitting on my porch. There are people standing in line to get food yeah. for their kids. Right, exactly. And and I say to myself, I swear, I, I take my hat off to people who are holding it together every day and who are running businesses every single day and keeping it afloat teachers, frontline workers. Remember when it's seven o'clock, people were going out and opening their windows and applauding for- And playing music and yeah. And, and applauding for all of the uh, the nurses and the doctors at the hospitals. Remember when New Yorkers were doing that, you know? Mm-hmm. And and uh, I, I still, it's seven o'clock. I think, I think about that, you know? <laughs> I do. I it's do. a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. There were some wonderful things. You know, people baked a lot of bread and they got reconnected with their families and uh, they've sort of taken a look in the mirror at their <laughs> lives. What are some things that I still want to do? And have I been, you know, serving my dream or have I just been living somebody and else's being able dream? To work home. And being able to work at home, you know, um, yeah. Uh, reevaluating what home means. Home and uh, their careers too. Have I been doing what I really want to do, what I, what my talent is, or have I been doing things to serve, you know, just something else and living somebody else's dream? There's been a lot of that. People stepping out and, and doing things that they've always held back or didn't have time to do, whether it's writing the book or taking up the hobby or just spending time. And it's, it's so, it's so true. What are some things you've been doing? How have you been getting through staying sane, staying connected, staying creative through all of this? The, it was got political, I've been okay. unrest, have- civil, economic, pandemic. I mean, we were hit with everything all at once. I know. I know. It's, 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 I've been okay. You know, it, it had stages. I remember when, when we first uh, were faced with the pandemic, there was uh, a lot of fear and unknown. Uh, they didn't know how to treat patients. They didn't, you know, I, I liken it to the AIDS epidemic in a way, because I remember when we were as a society facing AIDS and there was that same kind of fear when when nobody knows what to do and, and doctors don't know how to treat it. and everything seems odd it's everything's happening for the first time and um there was a lot of that in the beginning for me i was very very i was just worried about our world everybody's god you know you don't want to go anywhere everybody's afraid of catching something and it was a terrible feeling but i think i i do a little bit maybe better than expected because It's going to sound funny when I say this, but I'm a soloist and um, I'm used to training on my own. I'm used to traveling and being on my own. Um, I'm used to writing on my own. I'm used to creating. I'm living on my own. So, I mean, I've been alone and creatively alone a lot in my life. And so I'm okay with being alone. But I think there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. And I think that there's a real difference. I think that when you're alone, you, you're with yourself and you can create and you can think and you can read and you can enjoy the quiet. I think when you're lonely, you're missing your loved ones and people around you. Yeah. And I think connecting with people. And so that creates a different kind of an emotional need. But lo- alone, being alone and being lonely are not the same thing. And you can even be lonely in a crowded room of people. Yeah. And often people are. And often yeah. people are, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, I just heard something yesterday, uh, really interesting. I don't know if you heard it too. Um, 
they were talking about these online dating services that and that they're all, increasing again. Yeah. They're like crazy busy with, with online dating services, but the things that people are finding, you know, they make you fill out all of this stuff before you go on profiles and stuff like that. And the things that people are valuing more now, um, are, are a little bit more heartfelt mm. than they were before. It it's isn't, just, right. It's just, yeah. Well, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe being quiet and maybe being alone uh, is not such a terrible thing. It's, uh, it's a terrible thing that it happened with COVID. It's a terrible thing that it happened and people are sick and people are dying yeah. and they're still dying and it's not slowing down. No, and there's various variants now, new variants, <laughs> it's sort of morphing and turning into other things. Um, but the genius of people is that even with these terrible things that are happening, they find ingenious ways of the vaccine evolving. and yeah. evolving. People are brilliant, you know. Resilient. People, yeah. People people have be, people are brilliant. Yeah, yeah. When they it, really are. When it comes down to brass tacks, uh, I think uh, people do roll up their sleeves, and uh, and and Americans are definitely known for that. And and uh, when times are tough, you know, we're always helping the rest of the world in many ways too. We're always, you know, trying to do what we can to come up with so many different things to make the world a better place. And uh, even in New York, New Yorkers sometimes get a bad rap, but when there's something that happens in New York, they are actually the people that you wanna have around because they'll roll up their sleeves. All right, let's get on this. Okay, you move that over there, slide over there. Let's take care, let's, let's get in there. They did that with 9-11. They've done that with yep. anything that's ever happened. Um, and if they, you ever grew up in a neighborhood, Jim, if you ever grew up in a real neighborhood, yeah, you know that's true, because they, they take yeah, New Yorkers take care of each other. They really, I really. I take care do. of my neighbors. My neighbors take care of me. I mean, it's like a little, it's like a little country here in my building. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have Lovety Hall here. What do you call what you have? <laughs> Bud's Hamish. place. Hamish. <laughs> Hamish. 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 <laughs> That's should perfect. I should I translate that for people? Do that in case they think you're saying Hamish. <laughs> <laughs> well, if something is if something Hamish is Hamish in, in Yiddish, it means you know it's like a real home buddy person. It's like um, it's like uh, from the heart. You know, yeah. it's 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 homegrown and it's from the heart. I've had several people call me a mensch. <laughs> oh yes, sure yeah. you are. You're okay. a real person. That means you're like a real person. And then recently we had uh, composer and musician Jimmy Roberts on, and he's fantastic. And he was on, he did a wonderful show. And he heard back from some of the people that follow him who watched one of the episodes of our show. And one of the, the, the women that wrote into him, and he shared it with me, it was, a, it was a beautiful comment. I never thought of it this way, but I thought it was an, an unusual and a really nice positive thing that she said. You know, my affiliation for years with uh, public television as well as wearing many other hats elsewhere, too. And uh, she said, you know, she said this not to me directly. She said it to Jimmy Roberts. He then passed it on to me. He said, Jim, I got this, this. This I'm getting flooded with all these positive comments after I was on your show. Everybody loved it. The, the lovety, the warmth, the just the casual nature, conversational nature. It wasn't an interview. It was a show like, a you know, you've been on some of the great talk shows and you know what a good talk show should be like and how it should operate and the warm conversational style. And that's with my work in television radio, that's what I've tried to create here on this online uh, show. But you know, your show can only be what you are. So if your show doesn't contain those things, it's not because of your guest, it's because of you. So if your people are coming back to you, Jim, and if they're saying to you, I, I love being here. I feel good here. Uh, it's a good vibe here. It's because of you. You know, it, it always comes down from the top. It, it comes down from the person who's hosted. So that's mm. a compliment to you, you know? I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, she, the, she said to Jimmy, she said, um, Jim is like, <laughs> that's kind of cute the way she said it. She goes, 
Jim, you know what Jim is? Jim is a, a Mr. Rogers for adults. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. I like that. It's the first time I've ever heard that. And I said, you know, she might have a point there. <laughs> that's good. You know, if you have something to give in the world, that's not bad. That's not bad. Lift people up. And uh, so you started early. I mean, like around 12. Tell us about this early beginning. Some really wonderful things. Well, I, was really, I was really performing before I was 12. When I was 12, I was I guess, considered a professional. You were seasoned but, veteran by then. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, but I was singing earlier than that. I was performing, you know, I was an amateur, but I was still getting up there and out there. And, and I was performing like when I was nine, 10, 11, I was doing other shows and stuff like that. But I was, I wasn't a, looked upon as a professional in those days. It really wasn't until I met her did I uh, become a professional uh, in the industry, you know, where it became, um, a, I was going to say a livelihood, my, my, my life, my career. Profession. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. My profession. Yeah. You know, my parents, it's funny. My parents never wanted me to be in show business. So they knew that I was, um, I was a gifted child and they knew that, but they, they were very wise about it. You know, they didn't push it. They didn't shove it. They, they, were, they were more of the style of, let's see how this all evolves. And so they let me sort of let that happen. And they would oversee it. Of course, nobody knew I was going to meet her. Nobody knew that was going to happen. But I, I think in their wisdom, they knew one day something like that was going to happen. Somebody was going to notice me. But they weren't going to push it and make it happen. And when it did happen, uh, I don't think they really wanted it that early in my life for me. On the other hand, they knew how much I really wanted to take that shot. So they let me do it. They really did. I mean, you know, it was funny. I had a funny kind of an upbringing because in some ways my parents were very strict. And in, in other ways, they were very unconventional and they were almost hippie like. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's kind of a yeah, a strange, a Ying strange and yang a little bit. Yeah. 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 A little. I would say my parents, uh, similar in terms of there were rules and things we could not do, could not say with there certain, there was respect, there was boundaries. Right. Exactly. Yet, they weren't, they didn't write us. They didn't like, you know, um, same thing. Know, if you didn't come home with an A plus, your world didn't end. You just go in tomorrow and try harder. You know what I mean? It, we had, it was fantastic that, that mix, that blend as opposed, they weren't overly free where they weren't attentive and they weren't on top of you where they were drill sergeants at all. It was a beautiful blend. And I think we were lucky to have that, weren't we? Well, I, certain, I know I was because I was looking at a very unconventional life. Mm -hmm. And and I came from such a conventional life, if you think yeah, about it. Right. You know, I was living in Brooklyn and I had my friends at school and I had my sisters and my grandparents were always there and my cousins. And, you know, it was a very, very, you mm -hmm. know, had my neighbor. I still I still am close to my neighbors from Brooklyn. Are you? Yeah, very. And and uh, I mean, my best friend from Brooklyn, Michelle Capisi, you know, and we're it still. Dear, dear friends today. Before COVID, were you going over for spaghetti and meatballs on Sundays to her house? <laughs> you got it. I, Michelle and I, we're so close. We celebrate our birthdays together every single year. Do you really? Uh, yeah. Our birthdays are like a day apart. And and we we never miss a year where we don't send each other cards and call each other. And we always have our birthday week together. And we're still very, very close. And I mean, I know Michelle. Jeez, I, I bet you I know Michelle since I'm 10. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I know Michelle forever and we're still very close. And then I have uh, friends from New York when I was in, uh, started show business. 
And then I went into school here in Manhattan. I, I couldn't go to school in Brooklyn anymore because I was being pulled out of school too much to go to work and stuff yeah. like that. It, was, it wasn't, it was an impossible thing for me to do. So I wound up going to a private school and I grew up with, had part of my growing up with those kids from Lincoln Square Academy. And I'm still, still best buddies with those kids. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, in some way, I had a very, very, <clears throat> I would say, normal Hamisha life. And in some ways I had a crazy, extraordinary life, but I think it was that I had such a balanced uh, life in some ways that I was anchored. Yeah. I was very anchored. And so I didn't get in trouble in the business like a lot of other kids did. Mm. And also my parents weren't trying to make a, a, a living off of me. That's <laughs> a big difference right there as well. Exactly. Yeah. The stage yeah. mother type thing. Margie Morris says, hi, Jim. Hi, Julie. Nice to see you, Margie. Welcome. Welcome to the show as well. And uh, yeah, nice comments coming in. I love all of this. Bobby says, I think your comments about the difference between alone and lonely is so brilliant. I can feel it in my heart. Uh, thank you. But I think it's true. I think it's really true. Yeah, yeah. Music uh, unites, connects us all. For sure, it's healing. I felt there is peace in the air. Grateful we are provided with some of the arts and shows as gyms during these long months. Absolutely. A number of people have asked me, you know, if I would continue this when things hopefully get better with COVID and everything. And I said, hey, you know, this is an extension of the kind of work I do. And as long as everybody's out there watching and more new people are discovering the show, I'll keep doing it. You know, it's, uh, it wasn't meant to just be like something for just now. Uh, it was something to continue. So absolutely. Bobby but says- But isn't it amazing how- um, The community was are, created? Well, how things are born. Yeah. You know? Right. I agree 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very much so. Um, we got a nice comment that came in from- uh, Bobby and she says, I feel blessed to have been a kid from Brooklyn. <laughs> and yeah, there's something in the water in Brooklyn. There we, really we is. <laughs> Julie. A lot came out of Brooklyn. A lot of came out of Brooklyn. Julie is for sure a genuine true lovity. See, you're a lovity already. There's I love this. I love there's, this. There's Grammys, there's Tonys, there's Peabody's, there's Emmys, there's Tellies, there's all these awards, Tonys. But then when you're a lovey on the Jim Master Show Live, do your feet tingle right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling it. That's it. Uh, Merlin in Ontario goes, you better stay around, Jim. You got it. That's it. Your wish is my command. Bernadette says, so grateful for the technology these days. We can watch live gigs, Jim's show. We miss our theaters so much. Um, so what were some of those early, I mean, meeting Herb, of course, uh, that's a great early break. And I want to let the audience know we have music for you and everything else. So you're going to hear Julie singing and everything. Um, but that early break with Herb uh, at that early age sort of opens some wonderful doors for you. Tell us about, you know, how these doors started opening and people started noticing who Julie was and how talented she was and is. Thank you. Well, there, it's a multi-layered question. Um, Herb that's, taught me- That's the, kind. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but it is. It, 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 it's a multi-layered question because what what is something like? Uh, you know, when, when something comes into your life, um, you're not busy thinking about how does it feel. You're just getting sort of through it. Right. You're experiencing it. And and when when Herbie came to that show, when I was singing at that talent show, Herbie happened to be there on that Saturday night and he heard me and he came backstage and he said, is my clock going to bother you? No, oh, I actually um, like it. It's very, oh, okay. it's very like comforting, spiritual or something. <laughs> yeah. My, my little grandfather, my parents bought me that clock. And, um, that's George Burns communicating with us. <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember Herb said to me, I have to speak to your parents. And when he said that to me, I knew my life was going to change. Mm. It's like, it's like, I knew it. I knew I was in that moment. I knew my life was going to change. And Herb taught me how to work. 
you know, uh, I had a lot of instincts as a youngster. I had a lot of, I always had a lot of musical instincts as an artist, but I had no technique other than what I figured out how to do on my own, which can be dangerous if, you, if you're a young instrument and you really need some guidance. And um, Herb taught me how to work. Mm. So that was, that was a whole other level of development. He taught me how to work. And um, and then I had to learn how to balance working with having a life. In, I was still living in Brooklyn uh, with my sisters and my parents and my grandparents. And then I had this other life in New York. You know, Ma, I'll see you later. I'm going to do the Merv Griffin show, <laughs> you know. And I would get on a train and go to the city. And, and what do the would you say? I love Merv. <laughs> she was probably no, she, like, what? <laughs> she said, she'd say, stay out of the subway when it's dark, take a taxi home or daddy will pick you up. That's mom. <laughs> That's my mother. Um, but, and then I would do my homework on the train. You know, I learned how to balance, you know, it's interesting. All the things my parents were worried about never happened. Because yeah. I was so focused. It was like I didn't have a minute mm. to waste during the day. I was always um, studying or doing homework or learning a song or recording or doing the Merv Griffin show. Or Johnny was in New York at the time. I was doing Johnny Carson's. I used to run down to Philadelphia to do the Mike Douglas show. Mike Douglas, yeah. You know, I mean, I did everybody's show and they were all here for a long time. And then yeah. one by one, they started moving out to the West Coast. But um, and Ed Sullivan was here and I was just working all the time. And um, so when I met Herb, he taught me how to work. Mm. And that was and that was a very important. And then he introduced me to some really fine teachers. Um, uh, and 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 I stayed with these teachers up until my adulthood, until they couldn't teach anymore, and and they passed. But uh, I was always a student. I was always studying. I was always working. I was always moving, moving, moving. And um, so that was that was what it was like after meeting her. He 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 taught me how to record. Uh, he taught me how to study. Uh, he taught me how to live on the road. Um, how to pace a show. That's a big thing, how to pace a show. Um, There's a shot there on the screen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Tell us um, what we're seeing. Well, well her Herbie. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. That, now that, that photo. I was doing a television special with Michelle Legrand and a wonderful, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant group of musicians called The Impact of Brass. Mm. And they wound up going on tour with Michelle Legrand and mm. they were produced and the show was produced by Frank Fiore, wonderful producer, brilliant guys. Now, Frankie and I went to school together. Did you See, really? Is, yeah, we went to school. We went to Lincoln Square Academy together. And um, Frank, see then that, that's Frank. That's Herbie at the piano. You see Herbie? Yeah. Uh, that's Frank in the middle. And that's, that's me looking over like, fellas, did you decide what you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute when sure. I figure out how to do it. Yeah. But, um, and Frank is only about a year and a half, two years older than me. So he mm -hmm. was like this young kid himself making his way in the business, we wound up, I should really say Frankie wound up, getting an Emmy Award for that show. Mm. And yeah, yeah. Mm. It, was, mm. it, it was a wonderful time. Uh, we did yeah. that in Miami at the university. Yeah. We used the hall there. And it was a, it was a remarkable time. And yeah. that's when I first worked with Michelle Legrand. 
Marcel Legrand. Oh, yeah. It's extraordinary. We just lost him not that long ago, too. He was one About of About three years ago, was it? Two, three years yeah. ago. What was it like working with the incredible Michelle? Michelle was very, uh, Michelle was very quiet, and um, he was a gentleman, and he was truly honest, and he and he loved the music, and he was all about just submerging himself into excellence. I I, I adored the man, and I I he was the real deal, yeah. and he was. Yeah, and he never made a false move. And what I mean by that is he never did something because he thought it would sell or it would be yeah, it didn't sell out. No, he 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 was he was always uh true to his school. <laughs> right, was, I love that. You know what I mean? He he was he was um he never abandoned his heart. And uh, I had I had a grand amount of respect for him. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he for you as well, you know, he for you, which is wonderful. I mean, that's fantastic. We got another. I was cool. very young when I worked yeah. with him. I, I was somewhere between 20 and 21 years old. And I think Frankie was only about 22 or 23 when he produced it. I mean, you can imagine, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're like and everybody in the band was was like us. They were kids. I mean, Herbie was a seasoned veteran. Michelle was a seasoned veteran. And we were a bunch of little pishes running around trying to get it right. <laughs> but here's, um, here's a great shot here. Where was this? Yeah, I'll put my glasses back on. What, <laughs> let me say, which one is this? Okay, this, this might have been rehearsal. I think this was rehearsal mm. at, the, at the auditorium. And uh, we, were, we were running down orchestrations and we didn't have a lot of time uh you know we weren't loaded with a huge budget you know so um we had to go in knowing our stuff now i'll tell you when you do shows like this it's interesting because you really like i talk about you have to learn how to work right. um you have to go in very very and you know this is true jim when you do tv specials you've got to be very very well prepared before yeah. you go in because you're not going to have a, a lot of time to try to get it right in the studio. And, and especially uh, if it's live, too, because there's yeah. no going back when it's live. There's no going back. But, you know, I like live TV. So do I. So do I. I, I love, love yeah. it. You know, I was raised on live TV. So, yeah. I mean, at 8 o'clock at night when I used to do um, Sullivan, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, <laughs> the downbeat was the downbeat and you lived with it, whether you liked it or not. <laughs> you know, it was what it was. <laughs> what was it like being on the Ed Sullivan show? I mean, it was like being in a repertory theater company, you know, yeah. and they did it right. He did it right. He really knew what he was doing. Um, yeah. it, it was a, it was unlike anything. It was not a regular TV show. It was, no, it, no, it was a real production show. You had five days of rehearsals, costumes, blocking. Um, I remember I worked with Peter Gennaro and Peter Gennaro dances. I had never danced in my whole life. And they said, well, guess what? You're dancing on it's Sunday, dancing. you know, and I, but that's, you see, that's how I learned. Mm -hmm. it, it's like throwing a kid in the water and saying swim. Right. Right. You know, and, and, and that's kind of what it was for me, you know? Really spectacular. I mean, these experiences too. Jim Neighbors, Gomer Pye. I, now, wow. I loved this man. I loved, loved, loved this man. And he was. What a voice on him, too, right? What a voice and what a heart. Yeah. He, he was, he was still that nice kid from Selacauga, Alabama. You know, he was just the sweetest, most principled, honest person that you could ever meet. Mm. And, he, you know, he was uh, dear, dear, dear friends with Carol Burnett. Yes. They were like brother and sister. Very much know? so. And yeah. it was funny because that's when I had my CBS contract. And uh, all of those shows were done out of the Fairfax studio in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and Carol's yeah Carol's studio was right next door to our studio from television then, city in Hollywood <laughs> television city and then on the other side was um 
Sonny and Cher, they were, right. they were, they were doing their summer replacement. They were a summer replacement show in those days. They were exactly. So yeah. what was happening? Uh, what were you doing with Jim in this shot? We had just finished. Actually, it was during, um, it was during a big medley that we were doing on the show. Terrible the, show or his show? No, no, his show. His show. He had the Jim Neighbors show too, it right? It was the Jim Neighbors. Well, it was the Jim Neighbors show. He was. You have to understand how um, the studio was built. It's almost like there were cubbies, and yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. Carol Burnett was over here, and Jim Neighbors was over here. Air and and, and right, it, and it was it was done. Like, the and family was over there. <laughs> they were. Oh, that's right. Everything was done, uh, maybe on another floor. I think all of the all of them was done on building. another floor. Yeah. Right, it was on another floor, and um, it was. It was just, it was an amazing, it was just the best time in the world. There really is nothing like it today that exists like that. No. No, there really isn't. And it was such a training ground for me. It's I like mean, a it was, Mecca. Yeah, big headquarters, a Mecca. You, mm. And everybody knew everybody because you bumped into everybody. Everybody mm. was there. If you went to lunch at the con commissary you know you might be sitting next to Cary Grant because he happened to be making a guest spot on somebody's show right. you know and everybody hung out together because it was just that way mm -hmm. you know we were just there and that, oh now that photo there's her we were at the Algonquin in New York and I had just premiered my CD Pure Imagination on the After Nine label. And uh, it was a very exciting time. It was the premier room in New York City mm. to, to perform in. And that was opening night. Wow. That was open, yeah, that was opening night. That is amazing. And of yeah. course, Julie and, Budd and... Yeah. Sinatra, BB King. That was I mean, the marquee. Can you imagine? I I drove up to the hotel and I that was the first thing I saw before I got out of the car. Unbelievable. Yeah. Las Vegas, Caesar's Palace. And when you saw that, what was that feeling like? It must have been extraordinary. I, you want to know what my real feeling was? <laughs> I, I, I had just come from the airport. We drove up to the hotel. I saw this. I said, my father was flying in for the opening. Yeah. I said, my father is going to faint when he sees this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then I thought to myself, I better know this show tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I better be studying tonight like nobody's business. I had been studying that whole month. I had been working with Herbie on those orchestrations. I had mm. been working. And, you know, they were new. Some of the orchestrations were new. Yeah. And I, the only thing I, I had heard was me and Herbie at the piano. I had not heard them with an orchestra yet. Right. I was going to hear them the next day in rehearsal for the first time. And I was mm. opening that night. Yeah. So imagine, imagine mm. the guts I had at 15 and a half, 16 years old. And, uh, and I remember thinking, I better be really focused. <laughs> you <laughs> were 15 and a half, 16 when this was we, uh, up in lights in Vegas? Wow. Yeah, I, we opened in April and we wow. opened in April. My birthday's in May. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't even I wasn't even 16 years old yet. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That is incredible. That's, Sinatra, yeah. Julie Budd, Pat Henry, B.B. King, unbelievable. Yeah. And Jeffries and the Flamingos. Whew, that is... Uh, now was, they weren't on our show. That was the late show. That was the evening, right? That was later. That was the late show. They had and, like and a couple of shows, right? You know what? In the lounges in Vegas and the late shows, some people thought those were the best shows, the best people. You know, you had Keely Smith and you had BB King and you had Peggy Lee. And, I mean, you had some brilliant people in the lounges. That's right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. 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 It's really amazing when you look back at all of these uh, fabulous memories here. Um, and of course, you had a wonderful relationship with this gentleman. And I actually had an opportunity to do uh, some segments for the special that Adina Mazel did with uh, the wonderful 
Marvin Hamlish. Tell us about oh, yeah. your relationship with Marvin Hamlish. You know, I look at that picture and I can't believe Marvin isn't with us. I mean, you know, it's a weird gone thing. Gone too soon. Yeah, gone too soon. Do you ever have that with somebody? You know, you look at something and you just say, did that really happen? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be relatives. Yeah. It could be friends. It could be yeah. absolutely. Every time I see a picture of Marvin, I swear, Jim, I think that. I think like. Because he was really full, of, full of life. Yeah. It's like you can't believe he isn't here. You know, I had known Marvin. Let me see. I, st I think about that with, uh, who was a friend of mine too, because of his energy and having known him and uh, and just because, well, well, actually two people, Alex Trebek. Oh, yeah. And Regis Philbin. Because you know, Herbie, Regis was one of those people you thought would just always be there with his energy. Let's Regis go. I'm, lived, I'm staying Regis in the network. Lived, <laughs> Regis lived across the street from me. And Herbie oh, used to conduct for him. And I became very friendly with Regis and Joy actually through, not that I didn't know them. I knew them from the business, but I became really friendly with them through Herbie. Yeah. And then I wound up working with Regis in Atlantic City. Yeah. And um, I act. loved Regis. I thought, Regis, yeah. God, wasn't he? Yeah. But yeah. you were talking about Marvin. I mean, Marvin my Hamlet, relationship yeah. with Marvin. Let's see. I met Marvin in 1978, 79. So how many years ago is that? A few. <laughs> yeah. And it's and before then, COVID. <laughs> it's before COVID. And then I, I wound up getting signed to Walt Disney Productions. Mm. And lo and behold, Marvin wound up doing the soundtrack with Carol Bayer Sega for the movie that I was in. And so I wound up working with Marvin on the movie. Right. What was the and name then we, for everybody? It was, called the, it was called the Devil and Max Devlin, and mm -hmm. and and it was uh, it was actually a, a a great little movie for for Disney, and Marvin did all the music. Carol and Allie Willis, God bless her soul, Allie also did the music, the lyrics. Carol did lyrics. Allie did lyrics. Marvin did all the music, and then Marvin. And I went into the studio and Marvin recorded me on a song called Roses and Rainbows that he wrote for me in the film. And then fast forward a few years later, Marvin and I wound up going on the road together. It was going to be for a couple of shows, a couple of symphonies. He became principal pops conductor for like eight orchestras, which is crazy because yeah. like nobody ever does eight orchestras, but that's all Marvin. Mm -mm. So um, I wound up going on the road with him. It was going to be like three or four shows. It wound up being seven years, seven years. I wound up going on the road with Marvin and um, seven years. I can't believe it. And I remember when Marvin got sick. And uh, I, I, I knew Marvin forever. I knew his sister. I was close with his sister. I knew his mom. Um, I knew his nephew, David, a little bit in those days because I was close to his mother. Mm. And um, I don't know. I just, and then I became very friendly with Terry, his wife, who's a, a most delightful person. And oh, she was a wonderful wife. And she was totally devastated when Marvin died, as we all were. But I could just imagine what life must be like for Terry. She must miss him terribly. And um, I, just, I just saw Marvin uh, at the end. I saw him get sicker and sicker. And it broke my heart. And I just never believed it would ever happen. You know, I just, I just wouldn't even go there. And then it did. And I still can't believe it. But um, he was, uh, what was Marvin like? Marvin was brilliant, exhausting, argumentative, opinionated, funny, brilliant, extraordinary, all in the same hour. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He was he was exhausting, but he was you'll never know anybody like him. You'll never meet anybody like him. There never will be anybody like him. Um because he was a diamond and um he was a genius. And people say that about a lot of people in our business. Oh, this one was a genius. Oh, that one was a genius. But he really was a genius. He was. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you and uh, Rex Reed. Oh, God. That was on my birthday. That was just a couple of years ago. Was it? That was recent. Yeah, no, that's a recent picture. It, does that he live in the area me. close to you? He lives like three blocks away from me. <laughs> um, and... That was like two years ago. That was at my birthday party. That's when you could get together. I was together. at the triad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was at the triad theater. My friend Walter Willison had directed uh, a brilliant show. And um, uh, um, Rex was there. Mm. And they presented me with this huge birthday cake. And Rex wanted the sugary rose that was on the cake <laughs> and i gave it to him <laughs> and we had the best time and it was a great night we had champagne and cake and Very we nice. watched and we watched this um brilliant show and it was just a beautiful it was a beautiful birthday and mm. you know it's funny when i look at that and i and i think of how crowded the room was that night to see walter's show and and um and how we're distanced now it's such a different thing i it's yeah. like but we'll be back there again oh, we'll yeah. be back there again and, and you know what's going to happen people are going to appreciate each other so so much that's when this is over. exactly that's you know uh, that's people I, are going to really appreciate each other i keep saying i hope we rise out of these ashes more empathetic more loving more collaborative we listen to each other more and we care more that would be wonderful if that is some of the residual from everything that uh you know we've been tested by because i say there was sort of like a a meeting of the minds that happened uh, the divine mother nature and planet earth came together and told us to all stop we were headed in the wrong direction there was all this hatred and divisiveness and yelling and screaming and people were just stuck on their technology and all this and they came together and said, stop, we're going to throw some major things your way, see how you handle them, see if you rise to the occasion and you realize what's important in life, the simple things, the caring, the love, the, the gentle touch, the gentle word, all very important. And hopefully uh, some of those things will uh, reign supreme and last beyond all of this. That's what we're hoping. hoping. Lots more levity is what we're looking for. Uh, through all of this, we kind of you know nice. it's fun. All my all my best friends, they were at this party, and I don't think you have the picture, but Herbie was there with me too. Herbie was there. I gave him the other rose. <laughs> that's cool. Hey, I've got another cool shot here. Oh, that's me and Michelle. Lagrand. Yeah, let this me. Says, uh, this says 1975. Wow. Yeah. 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 Oh, the the impact of brass proves. Yeah, they were great. They were great, 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 great. And yeah. Michelle, see now that's another thing. I I see. I'm I'm so bad. I I can't believe Michelle's gone either. No. I just you know, it's like certain souls just stay with you. You know. Mm hmm. And yeah. and uh, he, he just he just he was all about beauty. You know, I never saw anybody who could touch a keyboard and just even by mistake just does something beautiful. Yeah. You know, it's it, just wherever his hands would land. Do you know what I mean? Michelle. That's real know, tickling the ivories for real. Absolutely. You know, it's just yeah. it's just the way he just just you know and, yeah. and Marvin, you know, everybody's got their thing. And Marvin would be clever and funny. And it, it, Marvin was like a vaudevillian. You know, he could he could do everything. And and Michelle, he was sort of this quiet seemed introverted and he would just put his hands on the keyboard and it was like the heavens opened up, you know? 
That's really amazing, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, you know, everybody's got their gifts, you know, everybody. And Herbie, you know, like when Herbie hears something, he hears it as an uh, as an orchestration. You know, um, he hears it complete. Um, he hears it uh, complete because he's an orchestrator. So he's right. hearing all the parts. All and, the you know, he knows where the strings should come in and he knows where the oboe should fill and he knows where that instrument should be next to your voice to be, you know, supporting the vocal and, you know, but you see the, the, the grand part about working with these people is when you work with them, you have to be better. Yeah. Because it's like playing with tennis with somebody who's so much better than you. You better have your game, you know. You better. And you know, yeah. <laughs> and and the thing is, they teach you so much, and all of a sudden you find yourself uh, calling on parts of yourself that you didn't know you had. Mm -hmm. And 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 you go, oh wow, I didn't know I could do that. I never did that before. But oh, okay. And you start exploring that, and you. Because you're working with them and you have to produce more because the better these people are, the better you better be. Right. And, and so you become better. You have to keep up and you become better and you become more. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're a greater, you're a greater artist. You have more, you have so much more more to give and more to share and more for people to experience and more room to grow. And, and all of that's important. We, uh, we have a clip here. We want to share with our fabulous viewers watching and uh, a couple of really nice comments coming in along the way. James says, Jim, thank you so much for having the incomparable Julie Bud on your show. She is not only a phenomenal singer and performer on stage, but she's an amazing actress too. That's from James. Bruce says, I agree. Then James says, can Julie talk about what it was like working on Max Devlin and Two Lovers? Sure. And thank you. Um, and do you have well, an interest in pursuing a film career? Does she prefer singing over acting or vice versa? All from James. Great questions. Right. Well, when I did Two Lovers, it was a long time since I had made a film. And um, the first time was, was at Disney. And I was in my 20s. And I did Two Lovers about 10 years ago. So there was time between Two Lovers and Devlin, but of course the disciplines are the same. Um, I love doing film, I, and I love that, that you could take your time to get things right. It's like recording. When you record, you know, you know you can take that time to get it right. Live performance is so different because it's you're in the moment, you're live. Like you said, there's no taking it back. And there's a beauty in that too. Uh, but you use different parts of yourself in different ways, depending upon the medium that you're working in. Um, I loved doing those films. And I loved doing them for the same reason that I was telling you I loved working with uh, Marvin and Herb and Michelle and all those people, because you had to be better. When I worked with Elliot Gould, Elliot is a wonderful actor. He's a wonderful actor. And he is a very generous actor. I got a little spoiled with him because he was so generous. I thought everybody in the world was going to be like him. And, um, and then when I did Two Lovers, I worked with Joaquin Phoenix and, and various other people who are equally as wonderful. And they were such great professionals. James Gray is a great director. And even though I didn't have as much to do in that film as I did in Max Devlin, when you are around really great people, you learn so much. You become so elevated. And um, I was very, very, very grateful that I, I always say I'm grateful that I work with people that are better than me. <laughs> 
<laughs> because then I become more and um, and I can become better. And uh, and as far as the music question is concerned, um, I don't think of the music being so separate from the uh, doing a book show or straight acting. I just think that it's a it's another extension of itself. Mm -hmm. If you're a good singer, you've got to be a good actor. Um, and you've got to make things personal or you yeah. you might as well just go home and play anybody's recording of right. that song. You yeah. know, um, a, a part of why people hook into you is because you give them a personal experience. So if you're not doing that musically, I, I, I don't see how an audience would have any feeling about you at all. So yes, you have to be equally as, as good an actor as you are in film or in uh, a play, mm -hmm. or as you are when you're recording an album. So I hope I answered I hope I answered his question. You did. You did very beautifully, too. I want to just show you some of the lovely viewers' uh, comments coming in from around the world here on our show. We welcome everybody the Jim Master Show live. We have legendary singer and actress Julie Budd is my very special guest joining us uh, from her lovely home in New York. Wow, Julie, what a life from Merlin in Ontario, Canada. Kathleen in New York, so lucky to have met so many great people and have so many wonderful memories. Bobby Horowitz, I remember your birthday party at the Triad. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we, oh, she was there. Oh, God bless her. I love her. <laughs> it was a fun night, Bobby. I remember that night. It was fun. You know, it's it's so funny. I, I just always worked in my life. You know, there was... Even now in the pandemic, I'm, I'm, I'm busy writing and, and Herbie just wrote a song and he's sending me lyrics this week. And, you know, even though I'm not out there on stage, I just, I mean, for a girl who's out of work, I'm very busy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> Somebody was just asking me that yesterday. They said, how are you doing with all this? Are you like, what do you do with your day? And I said, I'm so busy. It's like, you know, for I said, for a girl who's out of work, I'm very busy. I'm pretty busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Christine in uh, North Carolina says, you've sure had unbelievable experiences with such talented musicians. And of course you are as well. Julie Bernadette says, these memories are wonderful for you to carry in your heart. Uh, Juliana says, I have loved getting to hear about your experiences and your storytelling is vivacious. Julie, thank you, Jim, for hosting such a great show. Thank you, Juliana, watching on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Cozy Michaels says, hi, Julie, I'm enjoying listening to you. This is Grandpa Louie's grandson, Mike. You have the same beautiful features like your grandmother, Please call me. And then there's a number there. Oh, my there. God. Louie. Louie was <laughs> deal with my grandmother. Wait a minute. I'm getting my magnifying glass. Hold on a second. <laughs> that is funny. Oh, Wait. my God. That's his grandson? Oh, my God. Hello. How are you? My gosh. I was a little, little girl. And he was sweet on my grandma. Yeah. What a he cool was. name, too, huh? Cozy Michaels. Isn't that a great name? Cozy well, Michaels. Let me tell you, his grandpa was cozy. He was a very sweet guy. I remember Louie. I was, remember him well. Was this in Brooklyn? Well, I was living in Brooklyn, but they were living in Forest Hills. In Forest Hills. Wow. Yeah, they were living in Forest Hills. And wow. uh, and I, re I used to go over the house all the time. <laughs> you know, like, it's so funny. But I like the magnifying glass. It's like, wait, let yeah, me get Yeah, well, you know, I can't see anything. <laughs> I can't see anything. It's like I go through life guessing. But the thing is, but the thing is, you know, but this is what I'm talking about. See, this is why I never became this sort of stage kid. You know, I had a real life. I mean, you were surrounded you, by, yeah, real people. I had real people around me. And, uh, well, Merlin and had asked uh, Merlin in Ontario, and I guess the answer is pretty much there because you you had fun along the way. She said, you know, with all the working and everything you were doing, you know, in some pretty high level situations, when sure. did you, being at that younger age, when did you have time to have fun? But you were having fun along the way, I guess, huh? I guess I was. Look, everything has a trade off. You know, um, 
everything has a trade-off. I mean, think about it. Think about it. Um, you make decisions, right? And you have to devote yourself to the decision that you make. If yeah. you're going, you know, you're going to be an artist. You're going to train. It's going to be a big part of your life. Um, there are going to be times you can't go to that sweet 16 because you got to use your voice the next day. You know, um, you make decisions and there's a trade off for everything. Some of it was good. Some of it in your life wasn't good. Uh, you know, the movie Turning Point, I think, was a really, really good depiction of decisions. One woman leaves dance. She could have had a brilliant dance career and she leaves dance to raise a child. The other woman stays in dance and becomes a legend, but she has no child. Mm. In life, we make decisions and there are trade-offs for every yes and no that we make in our life. And it all depends on how much you desire uh, the path. It, 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 it's, it's really about that. And I desired that path. So I didn't feel like I was giving anything up. Mm -hmm. And I was also fortunate enough to have a lot of old friends around me and family around me. So I wasn't completely um, alone separate, or right or separated separate. from my old life. But um, but make no mistake about it. I mean, there were trade offs, but sure. I chose. Them, but I was always clear that I chose to make those choices. My parents were wonderful. I, I mean, I remember my father and my mother saying, when this gets too much for you, you know, you can always come home. I remember them saying that all the time. I always heard that too, that your bedroom will still be waiting for you. That's right. I had that too. We may have that. changed the sheets, curtains, and blankets, and the lampshades, but it's still yeah. there for you. <laughs> it was the same. Well, we're very fortunate, Jim, you know. Not everybody had that. I mean, I... For every one of our stories, you and me, um, I can tell you horror stories. Mm, yeah. You know, parents, parents living off these kids, uh, oh, those kids yeah. uh, winding up in rehab centers, uh, suicides, uh, their careers um, not panning out, them not knowing what to do with the rest of their life, mm -hmm. uh, going into really bad relationships, drugs. You know, I mean, I could, I could tell you. Um, for every Julie and Jim, yeah, there were there were a lot of kids that had a, and they were big stars. I mean, I would never mention yeah. their names publicly because they were friends, and I always would never, 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 uh, you know, do that to anybody. But 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 it existed, and um, unfortunately, there were more of them than us. You know, I have learned that. I have learned that. I I. It took me a while to realize that not everybody had a, the same sort of upbringing or, or had those people around and That's the right. love and the support and the, the traditions and the comfort and the structure right. and that a lot of people don't have that and never had that. And, um, yeah. <clears throat> it's, and, it's, and it wasn't dealt well. And, and a lot of their career wasn't dealt well. And um, disappointments were very hard for them. You know, there's a lot of rejection. You know, we're sitting here and we're talking about the fun stuff that I had. Right. But, but, but we don't talk about the rejection. And these are children. You know, remember, these are children. That's right. They're not, I mean, adults alone have enough trouble with it. To deal with but it, But we're right. talking about kids. That's right. I've, and I was, I was just very fortunate that, you know, I had a good spine. You know, I was able to hold myself up. But it, it's not always easy for someone, uh, you know, to write and say something very cruel about a kid, you know, when they put their heart and soul into something. And, and for someone to have um, written, you know, very cruel, cruel things. You know, there were, there were critics in those days that were very tough. And I just had to buck up. If I wanted to be in this business, I, I had to make up my mind that um, not everybody's going to love you all the time. You know, but and you have to you learn know. to make sure that you love yourself, not in an egotistical way, but you have to appreciate yourself, too, because a lot of people, they they love what they hear from everybody else outside. But when they look in the mirror, they don't love what they see. Well, 
for an adult, I think that that is a very, very true thing. But for a child, for a child, I think I'll, I'll, I'll flip it a little and say they need to know they're loved. Yes. Then the kid, see, I have a theory about children that whether they're rich or poor or whatever they come from, whatever it is, I think as long as children know that they are loved, they're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Kids are resilient. They can go through a lot. They can survive a lot. Providing that they know they're loved. That's what I believe. It's essential. And it can really make a if break. If children situation. know they're loved, they yeah. will be okay. They will be okay. Yeah. But they really not, have to believe yeah. that they are. Because yeah. if they aren't, that they carry that through their life and it involves and it affects their relationships with people and some of these well, their ability to cope, their ability to cope, to cope. unresolved childhood mm -hmm. issues, and, and yeah, yeah as a yeah. whole thing. their ability was, it's the ability to cope. And um, I just think that you know, you got to love your kids, children are delicate creatures, and you have to love your children. And I just I just think that that's true. Michael you know, Jack and I don't think I don't think you theory. have to come from the richest family, and no, I don't you think don't. you know. I th I think they just need to know they're loved, exactly, and really, really know that you know. But Michael. I've 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 been very fortunate, and even now, you yeah. know, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to going back to work, God willing. The vaccinations, you know, will will be out there, and God willing, within a year, within the time. Um, I'll be focused on doing symphonies and performing art centers again. You know, it's funny. I was so lucky in the sense that right before the pandemic hit, you know, that February, March time, I had just finished Vegas and I had just finished Florida. I, I was at the Lyric Theater in Florida. Before that, um, I was at the Axelrod Performing Arts Center in New Jersey. I mean, I had finished all these performances things I yeah finished, yeah i had finished birdland in new york i was supposed to come back to birdland that was mm. the only job i had to cancel was birdland i had four or five performances at, uh, nights at birdland that i had to do and i remember talking to jim caruso and mm -hmm. johnny valente and we had to cancel and that was i was supposed to go in in april i never made that job because unfortunately Everything. new york was it new york was at the height of uh, COVID at that time. Yeah, yeah, but God willing, maybe we'll be coming out of this. I encourage everybody to take the vaccine, but I know everybody has their own feeling about it. But I think, I think I'm going to take it. Are you going to take the vaccine? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me and too. And everybody in my family has said they are, and because uh, that's the thing, we have to be on the same page because we want to sort of knock this thing out as best as we can. Yeah. Um, we have yeah. a clip here. Um, tell us about I'm a Song. Oh, the Neil Sedaka I'm a Song? Well, um, God. Oh, well, first of all, I know Neil Sedaka. And I think he is. Did you ever get to interview him? Talk about a person who's interested. I met him when I was emceeing a Christmas concert at Carnegie Hall. And nice he man. One of the nicest, very, very approachable, affable, and yeah. warm and funny. A real talent, a real talent. He's one of those per people that came out of that whole 50s, 60s thing and actually had a, a real sustainable career. Unbelievable songs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, great talent. And I'm a Song is a, is a Neil Sedaka piece. And uh, I remember Herbie brought it to me years ago. And uh, he wrote the most glorious arrangement on that. Very involved, very, very difficult arrangement, but it was sensational. And uh, I think we wound up doing it on Johnny Carson. And I think I also wound up doing it on Merv Griffin. But and I wound now up you're putting it. do it on Jim Masters. Wow. A trifecta. Uh, That's a you trifecta. Got, but it was, it was a while ago. You have, you have a recording of that? Yeah. Oh my God! You have a recording of "I'm we've a got, Song." We've got the clip. Oh, you know what? We did "I'm a Song." We did it uh, with Michelle Legrand and the Impact of Brass. 
It was on that TV special. Mm. Is that the one you have? Is that the one? I, you I think it is. I think it yeah. is. Okay. Oh, Bobby, Horowitz said, Bobby Horowitz said she had her first vaccine. She's getting the second on the fourth. Mazel tov. <laughs> terrific. Terrific. I love that. I love that. Let's take a look at that clip and then we'll come back and we'll chat with uh, the one and only Julie Budd in just a moment. Our guest here on the Gym Master Show Live. I'm a song with Julie Budd. Ladies and gentlemen, Julie Budd. Doesn't anyone care? I'm a song and I waited so long for someone to come and sing me. I got a rhyme that I've had for some time, but nobody wants to. Brings back some memories, huh? How's well, I want to I wanna, I wanna take the opportunity, though, to thank a gentleman by the name of Doug Smith for allowing us to do that. Thank you, Doug. We appreciate that yes. very, very much. Yes, that's Herb Bernstein's arrangement on I Got Music. 
Edward Jordan, our great friend Edward Jordan, who was on the show with us with the brilliant Hollywood actress, uh, you know, playwright Edward Jordan. He was with us when we had Hollywood actress uh, Sky Aubrey on with us, who had just passed uh, in November at age 74, and we did a tribute show. So good to see you, Edward. And he goes, so wonderful. Bruce says, standing ovation encore. James <laughs> says, chills up and down my spine. Michael says, fantastic. What year was that? 75 or six. 75. Standing ovation. Uh, Julie is the best, a class act. Bobby. Uh, wow, Julie, I'm swinging. Thank you for sharing your talent with us. Bernadette says, uh, wonderful. Uh, Clifton says, uh, fantastic vocals, Julie. Talent uh, is truly in Lovety Hall. Love, Christine Clifton. Ralph says, we both look wonderful. Thank you very much, Ralph. We love that. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Thank has good Ralph has good taste, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Marvelous. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, drinks on us, although we can't get together, so we'll have to put that on hold <laughs> when we can get together. Marvelous from Juanita, who's watching late into the hour in South Africa. Kathleen in New York City, terrific. Merlin in Ontario. Wow, hearts. Claps, uh, emojis of all kinds. Awesome, Julie. Mary Bishop in Florida. And um, fantastic, Julie. Love it. Ralph says, hope you're having fun. Going well. Doug Smith, big assistance. Videos. Thank you to Doug. Yes, absolutely. Christina, I'm, all, I'm happy for your mom. That's very nice. Uh, Juliana says, absolutely fabulous. Bobby, I'm loving this. Uh, Julie. Really, really nice. Um, virtual applause from Juliana. Um, Maureen says, get it, girl. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, was ha, any uh, Has anybody ever mixed you and Barbara Streisand up at all or confused either one of you over the years from time to time? What, what they have confused is they when i was younger they knew that she had a sister that's where there was a confusion and they knew they thought you were the she, sister maybe they thought, the sister. I, they thought i was the one and of course her sister is a lovely gal uh by the name of rosalind kind yeah and uh i have two sisters i could show you their picture <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, Larry Larry Westlake was asking, "Where was that? The clip we just saw." That was in uh, in Florida at the university, and we used their their main theater to do the TV special with Michelle Larry. Legrand, uh, Michelle Legrand, Impact of Brass, and uh, and and me. And there was a comic, um, Lenny Schultz hmm. was. Uh, he was the comic on the show, Lenny Schultz. Did you want to get those two uh, pictures? The sisters? Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, I'll go get a bunch of, you got to wait a second. Oh they, I gotta they, go. oh, they love to see the couch again. They love the couch. <laughs> this, is the, this show is all about chairs and couches. And this is, we've seen many a couch and many a chair. Wait, on the I think my show. picture with my sister's over there. Hold on a second. I'll go get it. <laughs> <laughs> See, everybody loves it. Here we go. Here's your here's your beautiful look. Uh, I, I told you I'm going to do a whole episode just with all the chairs and couches and sofas we've seen from our guests. There's your look. If you missed it earlier, Julie Bud's beautiful sofa in her living yes, room yes, in New York. My pillows and my mural. Here it is. Okay, I'm back. And there she okay. is making another okay. grand entrance. Now that my sister is Jill and Susie. So it's me, Jilly, and Susie. Now tell me how you have to have this. Uh, I would raise it up just a little, and I would bring it just a little bit to the right, a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Freeze. Uh, a little bit to the left, head, and right there. And let's see if we can make it closer. So you pull it back a little bit. You you pull it back, so pull it back towards you just a little. There you go, and tilt it forward. 
a little bit better. Maybe pull it back a little bit and then raise it higher. All right, now slowly bring it closer just a little bit. I feel like I'm doing a live operation on TV and I'm in the OR. <laughs> How is that? Uh, a little bit to the left, just a little. Right there, freeze. We'll bring, we will bring it closer. You stay just like that and tell us who's who from left to right. Jill is in the white sweater. Susie's in the darker color. Very nice. Very nice. Beautiful shot of the three of you. Yeah. So those are my sisters. So it's not Rosalind Kine. <laughs> <laughs> do they it's Susie, it's Susie and Jilly. <laughs> do, do they are they do they perform as well? No. Uh Jill was a teacher uh for specialized education and she also had a business at one time where she was helping people with physical disabilities wow. and then Susie is a psychiatric uh counselor. And she helps people with um, substance dependence and uh, children uh, with emotional problems and families uh, who are in crisis. That's all beautiful work. All beautiful work there. Yeah, beautiful sisters, beautiful work. Juanita my, sister said Jill, my sister Jill, this girl, my sister Jill, what, this one, Jill, used to take me to the city for my for my lessons when I, my parents wouldn't let me on the subway by myself when I was really really little so my my sister Jill used to take me she used to go on the road with me she took me actually it was Jilly who took me and did my hair and makeup when I <laughs> did my first Merv Griffin show and it's funny so when you were saying taking you to the city you meant Manhattan right from Brooklyn to Manhattan right which right. is it, it's interesting because uh <clears throat> That's that's people that are from Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, I think also the Bronx, when they say they're going into the city, it really for them has always meant Manhattan. Right. When growing up out east on Long Island, for us, going to the city could mean Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan. Oh, no, it only Staten meant Island. one thing. You, no, no. Manhattan. No. Manhattan. You're going to Carnegie Hall if you're going into the city. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to Broadway if you go. My sister Jill took the me into city. the city. Yeah, she took me into the city to see my first Broadway show when I was 11 years old. We saw Fiddler on the Roof with Herschel Bernardi. Mm, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went with my sister Jill. Mm, that's funny. You know, it's also funny. I don't know if you in Brooklyn you had said this, but. And it's funny because people, you know, in this region, the region I'm going to talk about, say, "No, you're incorrect." We would say on the on on the island too. You you didn't you didn't go in Long Island. You went on Long Island. On the or, island. Or you exactly. just say on the island. You would just yeah, say the you island. Yeah, went to the island, or you just went to the island. You went to, to the, the island. The island. So yeah. if if we if you were going anywhere north of the city or north of the Bronx. Now that could be just right over the border. That could be Rye, White Plains, Mamaroneck. You would say, we're going upstate. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, and then those people there in Westchester would say- Where You're... were you on the island? Where were you on the island? Uh, I was born in Mineola actually, and then grew up you know, towards the Smithtown area. Sure. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that area there. So yeah. we would say anything north of the city line or the Bronx, if we went into Mamaroneck or Rye, um, we were- <laughs> You we were, were heading upstate. upstate. You were heading and then upstate. they would say, That's, <laughs> this is not upstate. This is Westchester County. Upstate well, yeah. is Syracuse, when, Rochester. When I watch Sex in the City one Lake night, you know, they, they have all these reruns and the girls go to their friend's house in Connecticut mm -hmm. to, to go to a baby shower or something. And they get in the car and they said, well, first of all, which one of us knows how to drive? Because, you know, New Yorkers don't have cars. And and then um, they don't know where they're going, you know, because when you leave Manhattan, do you know where you're going? No. And, you know, it's like a real New York thing. There's Manhattan and then there's every place else. 
It's like we don't know where we're going. And in Queens, don't ever train ask tracks New York. are above the ground too. <laughs> don't in Queens, don't yeah. ever ask a New Yorker for directions because if we if it's not uptown or downtown, we have no idea where we're going. Yeah, no, yeah. My dad from the city, and the same thing. We would go to our aunt Kitty and Uncle Sonny's house, would on the island, which was the town next door, and would still always need directions to yeah, go. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, and you know what? In those days, door. in those days, there was no, um, you know, the thing that we use in the car. What is that thing called? A GPS or navigation. Yeah, the GPS. Or... There was no GPS. No. Remember, you had to like roll down your window and ask a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? And my, and my mother would always say to my father, "Saul, just ask directions." Yeah, no, no, no I know where I'm going. Men didn't and, and, want to ask for the directions, right? No, no. Right, never. No. Men never. Asked, and we were always two hours late for everything. <laughs> And we would come up to Connecticut and Massachusetts every August for, and for like a month every summer. We would spend up in New England, especially Connecticut, Massachusetts, because my mother's the youngest of sixteen. Oh my God! We would come up from the island and come up to Connecticut, Massachusetts for every August for that, uh, you know, to see everybody because of the size of the family. But yeah. Great memories, right? Great memories. Fun, fun. Absolutely, absolutely. Blessed too, because you know, growing up uh, out east on Long Island, we, we we would go to like Broadway shows, and we would go to. I was just talking to somebody the other night about that. I don't know if it was David Shenton or Eric Tucker about how when you grow up in the tri-state area, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, to have the city right there. And well, you you had you had Westbury. I mean, a lot of people went to Westbury. Westbury. I worked there with Danny Thomas, Westbury Music Fair. The uh, revolving stage, the theater in the round, right? Theater in yeah, the round. Theater that's in the right. Round. Yeah, theater in the round. And Is I remember there? when I when I did their playing or song at North Shore Theater, right outside Boston. We were on a round stage, and I remember thinking to myself, "Thank God I played Westbury because now I know how to deal with theater in the round." The theater in the round, it would be like we saw the Andy Williams Christmas show that way too, which was kind and of the stage is always moving, you know. And, and and you know the funniest story about my working a theater in the round, I'll never forget. Herbie said to me, "We were doing a new arrangement." He said, "Now watch me for the downbeat." I said, okay, I'll, I'll watch you, I'll watch you. And I closed my eyes and I opened my eyes to catch Herbie on the queue and I couldn't find him because the stage moved. He's over there, back behind He's you. Over there. <laughs> I'm looking around for my conductor. Of course I missed the queue, but but I'm looking around. I didn't, I, it was the strangest thing. I had never worked on a stage that moved like that before. Yeah. And then I was supposed to go up an aisle to make a costume change. And of course I walked up the wrong aisle, you know, and I had to go all the way around the theater to make the costume change because I, I got off at the wrong aisle. <laughs> I was it's supposed like, to get like, it's like the wrong on. exit on the LIE. Right, right, right. <laughs> and the thing is moving and I, I, I missed it. Oh, don't even start. Brad, don't even start. <laughs> I have no sense of direction and I can't find the aisle. So there you go. Don't hire me, I'm a problem. Don't you just love folks the way we just did 10 minutes on that? And she says, don't even start. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a New York thing, isn't it? <laughs> don't even don't start. Don't even start. <laughs> don't even start. <laughs> <laughs> that, was just, that was just the teaser, folks. That was just the teaser. <laughs> Ruth H. says, I have fond memories of Julie performing in the Catskills during their heyday in the Catskills. How wonderful it must have been to be associated with such great establishments in the 60s and 70s. What was that like uh, working in the Catskills? Well, that was my training ground, you know, because uh, that's how I learned how to perform. Uh, I learned how to perform um, in the Catskill Mountains, you know, big theaters. And uh, I, I just learned how to perform for audiences. That's, that's where I met Herbie up in the Catskills. Mm, mm, mm. when I was 12 years old and uh, I didn't want to go to camp. I didn't want to go to camp and I didn't want to go to summer camp. And then the minute we got to the Catskill mountains, what did my mother do? She, she puts me in camp. So, <laughs> and I remember there was a talent show and, and they were holding auditions and I cut camp. Can you imagine? I cut camp. Did you, and, hear, did you hear that? That's a world exclusive. Julie Bud cut camp. I folks. cut camp. I cut <laughs> camp. I was a renegade. And I went down to the uh, 
to the uh, main showroom in my camp t-shirt and shorts. And I walked up to the stage and there were a whole bunch of adults on the stage and they all looked like they knew what they were doing. And I walked up to the MC and I owe my career to this man. I'll tell you, his name was Vic Minow. He was an ex prize fighter and he was also the MC of uh, all the shows. He was the guy that did Simon Says. He was the uh, director mm. of entertainment. He was everything up there. And I, he said, what are you doing here? And I said, listen to this. I said, I'm here to win the contest. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't say I'm here to be in the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't say any. I said, I'm here to win the contest. And there was a gentleman on keyboard. Now, I didn't know Herbie then. Herbie saw me in this show. There was a gentleman on the keyboard. His name was Milton Lear. Little did I know at the time. He was a very, very famous, well-known orchestra uh, conductor and uh, pianist. Brilliant man. Lovely, lovely, lovely man. And I remember he said to me, what key do you, do you sing the song in? And I froze. Because, like, to me, a key, you opened the door with a key. What did I know from a key? And... Uh, and I thought, I can't act like I don't know. So I looked at him and I said, just follow me. Like that. And he laughed and he went, okay. And I sang Moon River and Who Can I Turn To? And he looked at, at Vic and Vic came up to me and he said, you got something else to wear for the show? Because <laughs> I was in shorts and a T-shirt. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and he said, good, because you'll close the show tonight. And I said, oh, okay. I didn't know what closing a show meant. I didn't know what a key was. Nothing. I went back to the bunk. Well, not, not a bunk. It was a, it was a, actually, we had a, a beautiful room in the hotel. And, um, but it looked like a bunk. And uh, and I got something to wear and ran back stage and waited there all night for the show to start. Mm. I remember that. And, and, and I remember Vic Minow said to me, he said, you know, there's a guy that's staying at the bungalow colony down, down the road. I said, yeah. He says his name is Herb Bernstein. He says, you ought to get him in here to see a show. I said, why? What is he, what? And he said, well, you know, he's recording Laura Nero and the Four Seasons and John Denver and Dusty Springfield and Leslie Gore. He says, he would like you. Mm. And I remember I ran on this road by myself. If my mother knew I did this, she would have killed me. I went, <laughs> I, swear, I went on this road all by myself. I went down there. And I got to Homestead and I asked somebody, do you know a guy by the name of Herb Bernstein? He went, yeah, he's in the bungalow. He tells me. I go up there. I knock on the door. Herbie opens the door. And he sees me. He looks up. He looks down. There's a little kid. And I said, hello, Mr. Bernstein. I'm going to be in the talent show tonight. And you really have to come see me. Vic Minow said, I should come get you to the show. He says, Vic Minow said that? I, yeah, he told me I should get you to the show. And he said, okay, I'll go. And Herbie went down to the handball court. Herbie was a great athlete. And he went down to the handball court. And I followed him. And then he went to the pool. And I followed him. And then he went to the tennis court. And I followed him. And finally, he turns around. And he says, okay. Okay, I'll show up. I really will. Just stop following me. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, I got to the show, and I did my song, and I ran off stage, and when I got into the wings, Herbie was standing right there. And that's when he said to me, I have to speak to your parents. Mm. And that's when my life changed. I got into show business. And for the next 50 years, this was the only job I ever had. Mm, mm. You know, it's it's kind of a crazy story, but that's that's really how it started for me. And uh, 
I've been working ever since. You know? Unbelievable. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful story, too. And I'm got... the luckiest, I'm the luckiest act in showbiz. Mm-hmm. It, it must have been fantastic to have an association with the amazing Tony Hatch and his wife, Jackie Trent. Would you care to talk about your adventures with them? Well, Jackie was remarkable. She was a great friend. You know, we just lost her. Yeah. Uh, she, she passed. Tony uh, is, is still out there and a uh, marvelous talent. And of course, you know, they had all those hits with Petula Clark. And uh, they wrote all those songs for her, and Tony orchestrated them and produced all those uh, sessions for Pet Clock. And then I was on RCA, and uh, they had a very, very big international market. And they decided to pair me with Tony Hatch. So I went to England, Herbie and I uh, went to England and met with Tony. And we wound up recording at Pi Studios. And uh, I was 17, actually. When they, re when they released the record, I was 17. When I recorded it, I was 16. Interesting, because when I was in England and I was working on that album, I became very, very friendly with uh, Jackie Trent. She was like a big sister to me. And we remained friends all these years. And we reconnected later in years. And I was crushed when, when she died. Crushed. I became very friendly with her second husband, Colin. And uh, while I was in England, while I was in England, we got a call. A Liberace wanted me to do a tour with him. And he was doing a big production number at the end of his show mm -hmm. from, from the Broadway show, No, No, Nanette. Oh, yeah. So I had to learn this huge dance routine, but I was in England recording. So I wound up in the daytime taking dance lessons with this legendary dance teacher in London. She's since passed, but she was a genius. Her name was uh, Molly Malloy. And and she was over at Dance Center in London. And in the daytime, I was learning the Liberace show. And at night, I was recording my album with Jackie Trent and Tony Hatch. So I was working pretty hard as a kid. And then mm. on the weekends, I would do my homework, mail it in, and send it into school. So that's kind of how I lived. I remember when I worked with Frank Sinatra, the funniest thing he ever said to me. We were backstage and it was before it was between, uh, you know, that time sort of after rehearsal, uh, they call for dinner and mm -hmm. it's like several hours before showtime. So everybody's at, at dinner break and I was backstage. I was doing my homework and he came in. It was very un unlike Frank to come in early. He usually like came in right before the show and then flew out on his jet back to Palm Springs. But for this particular night, he came in early. He had a meeting. So we came in hours before the show and he came backstage and he was going to his dressing room and he noticed I was sitting in the dock on a, on a sofa and I was doing my homework and he came up to me and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, Oh, hi, Mr. Sinatra. You, you never hear this early. He goes, ah, I had a meeting in town. He says, what, what are you doing? I said, Oh, I'm doing my homework. And he just sort of stood there and he looked at me and I said, you know, Mr. Sinatra, I bet you I'm like the only act you ever worked with that ever said they're doing their homework. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed. And we sat and we talked for about an hour. But but it was funny, you know. I said to him, yeah. I, I, I bet you I'm like the only act that you ever worked with that said, I'm doing my homework. <laughs> homework to be done first. <laughs> hey, we've got more music here. We've oh, got another do? Yeah, we've got another clip. This is uh, Blame It On My Youth. Tell us about this one. Herbie put together a beautiful, we were doing a CD called Pure Imagination. And uh, uh, Herbie came to me with this Oscar Levant piece. And I remember, you want to know the funny thing? I remember meeting Oscar Levant with Merv Griffin. I was a kid mm -hmm. at yeah. the time. And uh, here we are years and years and years and years later. And uh, I'm an adult now and I'm out there doing concerts on my own and blah, blah, blah. 
And Herbie comes to me and he says, Julia, I, I want you to hear this. I put together this piece for you for the CD. Well, I thought it was just beautiful. And Herbie, by trade, was a violinist first. So he opened, uh, before he became an orchestrator, you know, and moved to piano, he, he was a violinist. And um, he opened with violin on this, which was kind of nice. Um, so this is Blame It On My Youth, uh, Oscar Levant piece and orchestration by Herb Bernstein. I think it's a tasteful, beautiful piece. And you'll note the violin intro, it's really quite nice. Here it is, the incomparable Julie Budd. Blame it on my youth. If I expected love when we first kissed, blame it on my youth. If only just for you, did exist Blame it on my youth I believed in everything Like a child of three You meant more than That wasn't the version I was thinking of, but you heard the violin. Uh, we had a uh, what a, a beautiful quartet. version that was. Yeah, the, the version I was speaking of uh, was the one on a recent CD, uh, uh, years and years and years and years later uh, that I did. That was early, right. early on. That was with the string quartet. the The version I was talking to you about when I said, "Oh, listen for the violin solo yeah. up front." Yeah, that was yeah. on the record. Yeah, that was on the recorded version. The recording, but that one, that version was spectacular. Yeah. Thank you. Thank look you. At the you know, it's simple, 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 simple. You know, yeah. that that's the glory of a fine orchestrator. Exactly. You know, it, it, the old story of they know what to leave out. You know, it's right. it's 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 simple. It's it's heartfelt. It's to the point. It's mm -hmm. not fussed up. You know, some right. people over orchestrate mm -hmm. things. They overwrite things. They overproduce right. things. 
And it's it's actually, I think, an insecurity on their part because they don't right. trust just the simplicity and the honesty of the work, you know? And just in case there was an audio drop on anybody's end, she said, fussed up. <laughs> oh, did I say? Why? <laughs> Just in case like anybody's, <laughs> just in case anybody's audio just dipped right at that yeah, point. Yeah, bust up, bust up, like a bandage. Bust up, bust up. <laughs> James says, "Wow, just wow," and uh, so pretty from Kathleen and Mary Bishop. What a voice! Wonderful, Julie Juanita in South Africa, so beautiful. And Bruce H, applause and bravo from Bernadette and Maureen, just wow. The Lovities, uh, our new Lovities joining us. Welcome uh, new viewers and our regular Lovities are loving it. Wow, just wow from James and uh, Merlin in Canada, bravo. And uh, Margie, blame it on my youth, exquisite Julie. Bobby says, love this Julie. We also have another song here. Now, this one is in the form of an MP3. So this one is Kindred Spirits. Tell us about uh -huh. this one. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Well, um, I did two CDs back to back. I did a CD called They Wrote the Songs um, about songwriters. And this is by Steve Dorff. Steve Dorff actually used to work for her years ago. Um, Steve Dorff is a brilliant writer who has had multi, 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 multi uh, Grammy Awards and uh, millions of records he's sold. Um, and you can look him up. You'll see all the phenomenal songs that, that Steve Dorff has written. And then I recorded another CD, which is a tribute to uh, Frank Sinatra. Uh, and so within a year and a half, I actually recorded two CDs. I, re I recorded, they wrote the songs. And then I recorded um, my last CD, which is recent, uh, was Remembering Mr. Sinatra. So my two last recent CDs is they wrote the songs and Remembering Mr. Sinatra. This is they wrote the songs. And this is all about songwriters. In fact, I think I have a Michelle Legrand uh, song on this CD as well. I have one from Herbie, um, a lot of different wonderful writers, but Steve Dorff uh, wrote, oh, and Anne Hampton, Anne Hampton Calloway uh, wrote a piece called Perfect on the CD. But I really love this piece also. It's called Kindred Spirits. Steve sent it to me and Herbie, and I knew right away that we were going to, we were going to record this, uh, written by Steve Dorff. Uh, orchestrated again by Herb Bernstein. And the engineer that we used was brilliant, uh, Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Lawrence, uh, uh, Jamie Lawrence, Jamie Lawrence. Jeffrey Lawrence is a friend of mine. I'm on digital delay. See what happens? I get, <laughs> I get fog, fog brain. Jamie Lawrence uh, is a wonderful, uh, wonderful engineer and musician as well. So between these three guys, they made me look good. <laughs> oh, you had a lot to do with it as well. <laughs> it's a, It takes a village, right? It takes a village. Here we go. Kindred spirits, everybody. Enjoy. It's a yeah. Comparable. Recent recording. It's a recent Re recording. Yeah. Recent. So we're taking you through the decades with Julie. Yeah. yeah. Kindred spirits with Julie Budd. Enjoy, and then we'll be back. Is it true and a leaf? <laughs> Welcome back. Sometimes the MP3s like to do that. We're going to start that from the beginning because it's a weird file. It's not the same as the video. Yeah. So it, it likes to stop. Here we go. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it again. Play it again, Sam. Well, you can hear her be string writing again right up front. So there you go. You'll and hear it twice. Your voice sounds the same as it did in 75. Unbelievable, Julie Bud. <laughs> That's called work. work. That's called work. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, let's let's bring that to bear again. Let's see if we can get that back up. Um, again, tell us why we do that. Tell us a little bit more about that, and then we'll bring that one back up. Well, um, we wanted it to be simple. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, not not fussed up, mm. and and uh, we wanted the message and the story. Uh, to be the star, and so uh, Herbie found Herbie found a way to orchestrate it, mm -hmm. and Jamie found a way to put the vocal in there to produce that feeling. It's beautiful, and I like I love the way it begins with the strings too. That's really really that's nice. A, that's, that's a nice cello. That's a cello. Yes. On there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. I think, we, I think we got it all queued back up here. Good things come to those who wait. And there she is. Everybody hold your breath. Nobody move. <laughs> here is Kindred Spirits. Is it true when a leaf falls in China? You can hear the sound in LA. Or when a butterfly fans who wings in Taipan. A wind blows across the Great Plain. So why does the reckless ocean answer the call of the moon? Why do I feel this emotion every time I look at you? We are kindred spirits connected at the heart, moving through the universe. Never far apart My love is a river And it's flowing where you are We are kindred spirits Two souls joined together By one star When you walk through a field in December, my feet feel the crunch of the snow. When you bend your face to a flower, I drink in the kiss of a rose. So why does the rain on my window tell me you're crying inside? Why do I feel what you're feeling the moment I look in your eyes? We are kindred spirits connected at the heart, moving through the universe, never far apart. My love is a river, and it's flowing when you are. We are kindred spirits, two souls joined together by one star. My love is a river and it's flowing when you are. We are kindred spirits, two 
souls joined forever by one Worth the wait. That was absolutely spectacular. Really Thanks. beautiful. Maureen Thanks. says, you have such a glorious voice, Julie. What a gift. And Merlin says, Thank you. Julie, Thank are you, you singing much. along to your MP3? Are you, were you singing along with it? <laughs> oh. Kathy, <laughs> Kathy Short in Cleveland says, beautiful. And uh, claps and microphones and hearts from uh, Kathleen Walker. Wonderful from uh, Chris. Uh, Bobby says, love that, Julie. And Juanita says, wow. Um, really nice comments coming in from the uh, lovely viewers and bravo. Thank you. And Thank you. <clears throat> wow, just wow, and just wow, and bravo. And uh, a nice comment and applause, and so beautiful. Um, what a voice, wonderful Julie, so beautiful, applause, bravo, so pretty. Um, a nice comment came in earlier from Larry Westlake, says, such a great way to spend a cold Canadian COVID night lockdown in Toronto. Thank you both so much. I needed this. Oh, that that's beautiful? lovely. That is lovely. Thank Isn't you. It? It's yes. our pleasure, our pleasure, absolutely. Also says beautiful and lovely. Um, you know, you, you also garnered an Emmy with the show you were talking about earlier, right? Wasn't yes. That, uh, yeah, uh, we all got, we all got uh, an Emmy award for the show in Florida. Yeah, we did with Michelle. I, it was a, it was um it was a lovely, lovely experience, and uh, it was it was a thrill to work with uh, uh, these wonderful musicians. The impact of brass was yeah. just, and and you know, the musicians such as Doug Smith, they're still out there and fantastic and they're, musicians. Yeah, they're, they're just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And of course, Frank Fiore is still producing, you know, marvelous marvelous programming and Herbie is still orchestrating and I'm still out there. So Everybody's the only still. one we're missing is our, as our beautiful Michelle, but his music will live on. God bless him, you know? And here's, here's a great segue with all these places you've been and all the stages you've had an opportunity to grace and people you've worked with right now, you are Home at last. <laughs> that's that's the song that Herbie wrote for me, and uh, we actually use it as a theme in our holiday show. And uh, sometimes I close my show with it. It's an exquisite piece, and um, it's it's very personal. Yeah. It's an original song, and Herbie wrote it for me. And what what is the inspiration? Uh, wh what does it mean to you that song? Well, we make home wherever we can, don't we? Uh, wherever we go, we take our memory of what home is with us. And wherever we go, we always long to be back home. So uh, it's that it's that safe, comfortable place uh, that lies within us. It is. It absolutely is. Beautifully said. Here's the one and only Julie Budd with Home at Last. Most of us have wandered far from home Searching for a brighter sky of blue I dreamed to but found myself alone Missing all the things that I once knew And all the while a mother 
We tried, we did. Is it so wrong to think about the past? It's not clear, but I'm here. It's so great to be home at last. The back porch in spring. The old. We sing, and Grandma's voice is music to my ears. The old neighborhood never looked so good. How could I have wasted all these? Bravo again. Thank Your voice you. has such a depth and a warmth and a a clarity. It's it's pure. It's so pure. It's Thank it's extraordinary. It really is. I mean, it's uh unbelievable. It's it's really, really you feel what you're saying and singing and the message you're trying to convey to the listener, to the consumer of the product. Uh, is done in such a way that it's, um, you know, it really cuts to the soul and to the heart deeply. Um, well, thank you. You know, um, it's important to live with material and to be at one with the work and to trust the people that you are working with so that you could produce that. Have we frozen? No. <laughs> okay, because on my... On my, you got your here. buffering thing. I don't know. It just it just froze. I don't know. You could hear me okay. You're all right. Oh yeah, you're you're looking good. Sound good. Everything fine. Oh, okay. Uh, Maureen says, "Wow, all the feels." <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, Larry says, "Brava." And Thank uh, you. Merlin says, "You should have done a James Bond theme." <laughs> yes. <laughs> <doing it>. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I would. I would have been a great Bond girl. <laughs> James, speaking of James, from one James to the next, James says, "Gorgeous, not gorgeous, uh, gorgeous." You. Fantastic, thank Julie you. from Chez, clapping from Bruce Juanita in South Africa. Great song. Your voice is beautiful. Bernadette says, "Julie, thank you for sharing your gifts with us." 
which she's been doing for quite a while. Ann Wozniak says, such a beautiful angelic voice. Kathleen Walker in New York says, Julie, you are a true lovity. Such a pleasure to listen to you. Byron Bellows, inspirational voice. Christine Clifton, exquisite Julie. Wow, all the video clips have been spectacular. Juanita asks, what music do you listen to, Julie? I listen to everything. I, I'm interested in everything and I listen to everything and I love all kinds of music. I listen to r and I listen to classical, I listen to jazz, I listen to the American songbook. I listen to everything, yeah. you know, because uh, if it's good and it's, uh, and it's well done, you know, I'll be a fan. Right, exactly. That's that's it. I, and I think the more you listen to, it broadens your own uh, scope of musicality, and so um, your ear just becomes bigger. It becomes you become uh, just uh, more of a sponge for more sounds. I just I just listen to everything I always have. You know, it's really like that in life too. Uh, it informs when, you. Do you know what I mean? It, in some way, it all informs right. you. And it's like that in life when you surround yourself with everybody and not just people that sound like you and look like you and think like you. That's what you just said about the music carries over to the rest of life, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to have to go get my charger. I knew it. See, I told you. <laughs> you were right. My God. Everybody I, I ends up showing us their chair and getting your charger and plugging it in. <laughs> but you know what you could do? <laughs> it's, it's, it's claim to fame now. That, you got the chair, you got uh, the charging of the phone or the laptop or whatever they're using, and lovity. All for, uh, one, low, all for one low price. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we, we have, actually, while you get the charger, we have Little Boy of Mine. Oh, I love that piece. So tell I us about it. that and we can do that while you get your charge. Wherever we do this song and we do this, we have done this song all over the world. Herb wrote this after his son was born. And again, it's another, you know, it's interesting about his writing. He can write with great, you know, bravado with a home at last. And yet he can take it down to its simplest form and you don't miss all the bells and whistles. And yet both are equally as uh, important as production. He just knows how to do that. Mm -hmm. you know? He does know how, because he's a really good orchestrator. And uh, I've been fortunate to have, to have had that in my corner. Um, Little Boy of Mine was written by Herb and the orchestration is by him. Go enjoy that. I'll go get the charger. Go enjoy that. All right. And Bobby Harwood says, you look and sound great. <laughs> oh, thank you, Bobby. Thank All you, right. honey. Thank you, everybody. I got to go get some go. juice for this thing. Or you got to go get singing juice. in the dark. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay, go play Little Boy of Mine. You got it. Here it is coming up, everybody. And enjoy Little Boy of Mine. Julie Budd on the Gym Masters Show live. Hope you're enjoying yourself tonight, loveities. More coming up. But wait, there's more. It looks like it paused again. It seems like the MP3s like to do a little bit of a pause for some strange reason. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can bring that back up because that is definitely worth uh, that is definitely worth listening to. So let's bring that back up. The MP3s are a little more of a funkier thing to play than the videos are because it's all being done manually as we do it. So let's see if we can get this back. All right, there it is. And let's see if we can do it. Everybody hold your breath, count to three. And here we go.
I <laughs> Well, you know what you did. You played the soundtrack and you didn't play the version with the vocal. That's the one we were sent. It's uh, the only one. I know, but they yeah. don't read their emails. I, I told tell them. You. I, said, <laughs> I said, listen, this is a track. I said, I can send you the one with the vocal. If you have it, play that one. If not, let me know. But you played the track. But, but I'll tell you what's interesting about the track. You know, we don't see you right now. All we see is a white screen. <laughs> you don't see me? You're kidding? See, now <laughs> my screen is frozen. Yeah, something uh, maybe. Can you hear me? Can you yes. hear me? Yeah. We yeah? <laughs> yeah. Don't you love technology, everybody? <laughs> don't you just love it? It's like a voice coming out of the clouds. It's a voice that comes out of the clouds. I, think I hear Julie Bud. Julie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, little 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 jewels from New York coming out of the clouds. If, let me see if I could take you out. <laughs> no, take you out. If I could take you out and bring you back in and see if that helps. We'll see. Pull you back. What should I do? <laughs> you know what you do. Um, uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy stuff, crazy stuff. The internet is nuts. Um, go back, take yourself out and go back in through the uh, private access guest link. Okay. I'll, okay. I'm, I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit leave. Okay. <laughs> nothing, I'm hitting leave. If I personal. lose you, if I lose you, everybody, I love you all. And Jim, thank you. Yeah. If I oh. lose you. If, if I lose you. Thank you if I lose you. That's a song title, isn't it? Or it should be. I don't know. Thank I don't you know. if I lose you. If I lose you, thank you. If I you. lose you, just know I loved you. Okay, we I'm leaving and I'm going to go back in as you showed me how. Yes, exactly. The private access guest link. You got it. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit, everybody. <laughs> that was funny. That was very funny. Uh, let's see. Smiles from Merlin. And... Um, Bobby says, this is a brilliantly said greatness has so much in it. You have that. I agree. It's a fun night on the, on the gym master show live, right? We also celebrated George Burns earlier, Julie and I saying happy birthday to George Burns. If you joined us late, check that out in the early part of our show. We had a wonderful time with that. She's going to try to come back in. So you heard a beautiful instrumental version of that song from what we were, uh, what we were given. <laughs> <laughs> which was beautiful. It was a nice, uh, nice instrumental version, right? And uh, I'm trying to think, I think there's another, there might be another song. Um, I think there's, I've got the world on a string. We might be able to play that as well. And there she's, uh, there she is. She's saying, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, I'm oh back. wait. Oh, you, you, you've got a new chair too. And a new, I have a new chair. Painting and a new what? Yes, yes. Oh, and oh, oh. what should oh, I do? You want, to, you want to see a picture of my mom and dad? Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, they're so adorable. I miss them so much. I really miss my parents so much. Can you can you see? Uh, I would say bring it a little higher. Up oh, and uh, let's see, a little higher. Okay, just a little bit higher because it, it, it right there and a little bit lower, just a tad. And now bring it a little bit, tad higher, just a little bit. And now freeze there and try to bring it a little closer, just right? And now bring it to the right a little, and then up a little. I say right about there is probably the best. And freeze and tell us their names and a little bit about mom and dad. That's Saul and Joan. They're adorable. Aren't they? Beautiful should I, couple. Should I still yeah. hold it? Do you yeah. Have it? No, that's good. We got it. That was beautiful. They're the sweet, my parents, I'll tell you something. Whatever I have in my life, I owe to my parents. They were just the most delightful people. My friends used to come over to my house when I was a kid. And they used to say, oh, yeah, it's great to see you. Where's mom and dad? <laughs> <laughs> They didn't come to see me. They came to see my parents. Oh, wait, you went away. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, she went away. She went away. 
Yes, I do directing as well. Yes. Uh, welcome home, Julie. She's coming back. She's coming back. <laughs> You're back. Back and better than ever. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, to help, tell us, is this another side of the same living room? You've got a beautiful painting uh, behind yeah, you. Yeah, a, a beautiful painting. My parents gave me this. And uh, on the other side, I have a lot of artwork in the house. And I have a, a stained glass objects and pictures of my parents and my family. And, yeah, you know, it's home. It's just home. It's like everybody else is home. You have your life around you, you know? You got your life around you. Hey, we've got another song uh, we're going to do here uh, while the technology uh, is still going strong. I've got, a, I've got the world on a string. Now, that's from my latest CD, uh, Remembering Mr. Sinatra. And I know that a lot of people did Sinatra CDs, but all these people that did Sinatra CDs never even knew Sinatra. Stra you know? Right. I love the music, but you know, I I knew the man, and I and I wasn't trying to replicate his work. I was paying tribute to the shows that we did together. Mm -hmm. What was he like working with? You hear so many different stories. What what was he like working with you and you with him? Must have been an honor. Well, he was wonderful to me. You know, it's very funny. You hear four million different things from four million different people. Yes. You know? And I, I remember, and I always talk about this, you know, I remember I was on the flight with Herbie. We were going out to Vegas and on that flight were all of the, um, the press agents and agents and all, the, you know, I call them the yes men and they were all on the flight and they were coming up to me and they're saying, now listen, you know, oh, don't speak to Sinatra. And if you need anything, you come to us. And, uh, you, you know, when you around Frank Sinatra, you know, don't annoy him and don't breathe near him. And, you know, OK, fine. So I get to rehearsal the next day. I told you I drove up to the hotel and I see the marquee and uh, I get to the rehearsal and not some of the arrangements. I told you I I was just hearing them for the first time. And um they told me to hurry up. Uh, Mr. Sinatra is going to be coming down to rehearsal. And um, I was coming. End of, of, so that was fine with me. I was, I was finished. And um, I looked off stage left to the wings. And I had lights in my eyes because I was on the stage. And I, and I realized somebody was waving at me. So I waved back. And then I realized somebody sent blowing a kiss and I blew a kiss back and I finish up my song and they say okay you can clear the stage and I went off what was my stage left and as I come out of the light I realized it was Frank Sinatra and he was saying hi to me he was listening to my rehearsal I didn't know he was listening to my rehearsal and um the first thing he said was, welcome to the show, sweetie. And if you need anything, come right to me. Mm. <laughs> so, wow. so much for the yes, so much for the yes men. And he was great to me. And he, and, and he gave me a lot of freedom and, and he trusted me, you know, kind of the same way I told you, you know, at the beginning of the interview, I said, Mr. Sinatra trusted me the same way that George Burns trusted me. He let me do what I do. And uh, he was very kind to me. Yeah. And it was a great experience. He was, he was really, really, truly nice to me. Um, it, to the point where, you know, it got to where I was calling him like Uncle Frankie. <laughs> he was Herbie, he was just, Frankie, Georgie. <laughs> Anytime you want to call me Jimmy, go right ahead. I hey. tell you, you can call me James, Jim, Jimmy. Just don't call me late for supper. <laughs> <laughs> but but this piece um, that you have was uh, from the CD, Remembering Mr. Sinatra. And like I said, I, I wasn't trying to replicate um, a Frank Sinatra's work. You can go home and listen to Frank Sinatra's work on your own. You don't need me for that. But um, it was my take on remembering what we did on when we did those concerts. Beautiful. All right, let's listen to that. 
We're going to enjoy it. Got the world in a string with the wonderful Julie Budd, the non-instrumental. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Isn't that funny how they do that? They they play and then they stop like right in the middle. Let's let's bring it back, play again, <laughs> play it again, Sam. And here we go. Let's see what we can do here. All right, ready, set, go, 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 go. The MP3s are funky. They really. They like to play and then they they get a little Well, fun. you know, I'm so a non techie, so I'm I'm like the here worst we go. <laughs> I've got the world on a string. Sitting on a rainbow Got a string around my finger What a world, what a life I'm in love I got a song that I sing I can make the rain go Anytime I snap my finger Lucky me, can't you see? I'm in love Life's a beautiful thing Long as I've got that string I'd be a silly so-and-so If I should ever let you go I got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow Got the string around my finger What a world, what a life I'm in love Life's a beautiful thing Long as I got that string I'd be a silly so-and-so If I should ever let it go on a string sitting on a rainbow got the string around my finger what a That is fantastic. Thank you. I, I love that boing at the end. I mean, that's a definitive ending. That is cool. Yeah, it was. It just it takes me back Beautiful. to what those shows were like. You know, we had forty-five musicians, and it was a huge stage at Caesar's Palace, and um, every night was like a party. <laughs> Anybody you that you haven't, anybody that you haven't had a chance to uh, work with that you wish you could have, but maybe they're no longer with us, that you admired. Oh, there are a lot of people, of course. Yeah, yeah. there are a lot of people, but I'm very grateful for the for the grand time that I've had and and the grand time that I continue to have. You know, I I I go on the road. I work with marvelous musicians. I um. I do a, a whole lot of things that I love to do and I write and I produce events and I, you know, I do, I do a lot of different things and, and I'm, I'm just very, very grateful that I, um, that I've had my life in art the way I have. And, uh, I've, 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 I've done my own thing right. and, and I did it on my own terms. And so, <laughs> I, I consider myself a very fortunate soul. Yeah. And I've loved 
all the people that I've worked with. I've loved, there are very few people, I have to be honest, in all my time. I mean, there's very few people that I've known or worked with that, that I haven't totally enjoyed. I, I've, I've been very blessed. And, um, and I've loved my audience. I've really, I've had a, a great love for the people that have come and seen my shows over the years and that continue to come back. Some of the fans I've gotten to know like friends. I'm, yeah. I've just, I've been, uh, Jim, I'm very, very blessed. And uh, especially this time, <clears throat> you know, being home and with the, all, the, all the COVID around us and, and the troubles in the world, I've, I, it has really allowed me to, to uh, have a, a, a grand amount of gratitude. What are some of the things that continue to inspire you and bring you great joy that uh, spur you to continue presenting all this beautiful material to all of us? Well, the people. I do it, I do it for the audience. Um, when I go out on stage, I'm, I'm a performer who thinks primarily not only about what I'm trying to express, but, but what I'm giving to the people. And everything I do has to be top notch for the people I work for, which is you, the audience. And that's how I feel about it. That's beautifully said and beautifully said. What was it like being on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson? What was that experience like for you? Johnny, I knew Johnny a long time. I had done that show from the time I was 15, 14 and a half, 15 to 40. I mean, I, I had done Johnny's show forever. He was a master of his craft, wasn't he? And he was a nice man. Johnny was a nice guy. He had a lot of pressures in his life, and uh, you know sometimes that changes people. Sure, yeah. But it, it it never made him anything but a consummate professional. How and he was he was always great to me. To you, yeah. He no, was. You yeah. know, I think the reason why a lot I've of people were they 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 recognized that I wasn't fooling around. It's a right. lot to me. To be excellent, and it still does but you're today. A professional, I mean, you're a professional. It really, it, it, you know, I want to. I want to give it my all. Whatever I do, I want to give it my all. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care about. I don't care about the biggest dressing room. I don't care about right. the right. biggest paycheck. I care about what is the best I can bring to you, and that is everything to me. Or you I wouldn't even bother doing it. We are kindred, speaking of kindred spirits, we're kindred spirits in that way because that's how I look at everything too. You have to really love it and want it and live it because there's so much sacrifice, blood, sweat, and tears and all the other things that are involved in it. Yeah. And, and people can recognize, like I'm sure Johnny Carson did and Merv Griffin did and Mike Douglas and, and Herb and, and Frank Sinatra and everybody, Danny Thomas too as well. You've had opportunities to uh, to do things with. Um, recognize that in you that you you're funny, you're warm, you're talented. You go with the flow. You can pivot when you have to. You get the job done. You knock it out of the park. And these are busy people who have, like you say, a lot of pressures, and they got to do this and be there and do that. And they want people around them who can come in and be warm and and affable and and knock it out of the park and they recognize that in you um, they need to trust you they need to trust you it's look you work for right. the networks you work for the networks you work for producers you you have to do your homework mm -hmm. you you know that they depend they they need to trust that when you come to them and you tell them you have a concept for something it, there's an integrity here. There's a there's a work ethic, and and that goes before anything. And yeah. and people know whether you possess that or not. And if you don't possess it, do not expect them to get on board with your dream, because it's right. it's not going to happen. There's a lot at stake in this industry, and um, and they need to know that you are a reliable artist. You know, there are a lot of people that are brilliant. They may be better than I am at what I do. Whatever but maybe they're not reliable. 
And you know what? You can't run a business with people who are just great, but they're flighty. So right. Right. If, if you want people and for those who are out there, you know, who are young people that want to be in our industry, you know, you have to work at what you do. You know, you, you can't, you know, people have to be. Love it too. You gotta love and you've got to love it. Well, if you love it, you will be good at it. And if you love it, you will devote yourself to it. So you have to be very true to yourself. This is a hard business. And if you're going to survive it, you better love it. <laughs> it's right. it, it ain't it ain't for sissies, isn't that what Betty Davis said? It ain't right. for sissies. <laughs> exactly. It ain't for sissies. No, it's not. Got another photo here. Congratulations, Julie oh, Bell, winner yeah. of the Broadway World Award Best Show Female Celebrity. They wrote the songs. Tell us about that. Congratulations too. Well, we it, was, it's, it was it was really it was it was really super nice to be part of that family of folks uh, at, at the Broadway world. And it was so nice of them to acknowledge me. And that, you could see my CD, they wrote the songs, is right on the bottom. And what we did is we made a stage show out of the CD. So when I took the stage show on tour and brought it into New York, uh, they were lovely enough to acknowledge the show and they, and they gave me that award. You know, awards are very nice. And Certainly, you know, you have to acknowledge how gracious people are to uh, to see you and and offer that kind of thing to you. But when you when you go out and you write a new show and you and you 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 take that risk, you know, it's like free floating. It's free falling. You you never know whether someone is going to like your vision or not like your vision and you just have to go out and produce it with your heart and hope that people are going to get it with what you tried to do. And, uh, and I was very grateful that they did, mm. you know, and, and they still, you do. never know. It could go the other way. <laughs> it could go There's the other always... way. <laughs> I think don't if get you... too cocky. It could go the right. other way. I... <laughs> I, I, is that your mother talking? <laughs> I I think that you know you, uh, it, it, you. It just can go the other way, so you have to be grateful when it works. See, that's how I think too, and I think it's a great way to be because uh, it keeps you grounded, it keeps you authentic, and it keeps you real. You always know that you got to work and fine tune and do, and because it could always go the other way. And sometimes, if you are going to rely on your last hit, you are in such trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no matter that's what it may be. TV show or song or book or anything. You Every to... day you are being tested, so you better show up. That's all. <laughs> it's like the day I saw the marquee and it became very real to me. And I turned to Herbie and I said, I better be on my game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is fantastic. Well, Julie, this was really outstanding. And uh, people can find your music at all the usual locations. Oh, the God, Amazon you know, and... Amazon has everything of mine, Amazon. Amazon and CD Baby and, uh, you know, iTunes. They all have my music. And uh, I hope that folks tonight will pick it up and, and enjoy it as much oh. as I have enjoyed giving it to them, really. Well, And the audience has been with me for so many years. I, I, I have, have to thank them for being so loyal and true to me. And I want to thank you for having me on the show tonight. You've been so lovely and uh, it's been a pleasure i appreciate that i appreciate that you you've been on you've been on the talk shows douglas and merv griffin and johnny carson ed sullivan what was it like being on the jim masters show live i think that you're as great a pro as anyone that i've ever had the opportunity to work with you're right up there with them all I you're terrific that. thank you Thank, Thank you, you very really. much. You're a blessing as well. And uh, George sends his best. <laughs> he loved this evening. He had a great time going down memory lane. <laughs> Thank you. you, Jim. You I really enjoyed this. Thank you again. I really did enjoy it. My pleasure. And hopefully, you know, once we get past all of this, we'll be able to get together and maybe break bread. That would be wonderful. Coming to the we'll city. Go, we'll see you. go meet Reno and, and Charles and we'll go and have that, a big Italian dinner. That sounds good. I love it. 
I hope the show really met your expectations and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you, Julie. You've been an angel. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. You stay well. You be well. Keep bringing us all the beautiful music. You're a true blessing and uh, a national treasure. And I just want to show you, uh, Juanita says, what a great show. Thank you for spending time with us, Julie, and sharing your wonderful life and music. Kathleen says, have a good night. Thank you, Jim and Julie, for a terrific show. Beautiful music. Have a great night. Everybody loving it, uh, my friend. Uh, do you know you and I had chatted in the beginning? Ah, uh, chat for an hour or so. We've chatted <laughs> three hours. I know. I got to go make my salad. I'm starving. But it doesn't feel like three, does it? Everybody says no, it, never it doesn't. Feels. It doesn't. And I feel like I know you forever. That's what it is. That's perfect. That's perfect. My friend, you be well. And thank you so much for gracing our presence here uh, with your presence on the show tonight. It was, it was a real blessing and very memorable. And you're welcome back anytime. We don't have to go three hours next time. <laughs> you can go as long as we want, but you're, you're really a blessing. And I appreciate all the time. Thanks for charging up the battery for us. Bobby Horowitz says, what a great show. I've seen many, as you know, and this one, wow. I knew Julie would be as great as you are, Jim Masters. Thank you, Bobby. Juliana says, uh, everybody watching on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV, thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. Love you, Julie. Kathy Short in Cleveland, Ohio. Thanks, Julie. It's been a pleasure having you here tonight. And anybody watching on the YouTube channel, love it if you subscribe to the channel and... Uh, Julie, you make that salad. You've earned it. <laughs> You've earned your supper. You're saying for your supper. Thank we, you. We even Thank sang you. happy birthday together to George Burns. It doesn't <laughs> beat it, right? <laughs> Take you. care. And you Bye. have a good night. You Everybody. be well. Take care, Thank Julie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. The wonderful Julie Budd on the Gym Master Show Live. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was really a fantastically fun evening too. Wasn't it fun? The technology and all the craziness of the technology and just the uh, the wonderful laughs and the camaraderie and uh, all the great music, her amazing voice, uh, maybe bringing back memories for you or who knows, you could even have just discovered her for the first time, even though she's a She's a treasure and a legend. Uh, she is a music industry legend. She's worked with them all. Frank Sinatra, uh, Danny Thomas uh, on the Ed Sullivan show, on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson and Mike Douglas and Merv Griffin and on and on and on. And uh, really, really amazing. And again, she's um, she loves to give back too. She's very involved, uh, you know, with so many different uh you know, charities. And she's just really somebody who is um, very, very special, very, very special. And um, I just think it's really wonderful. She uh, has won so many awards and uh, she even won the Emma Award, uh, Jewish Women of Accomplished, uh, presented to Julie uh, Budd. And that was amazing too. Proclamation from Gavin Newsom who was then mayor of San Francisco at the time, proclaimed August 13, 2004, Julie Budd Day in San Francisco. She continues to support the St. Jude's Hospital Research Center for Children organization that she holds close to her heart, founded by, of course, the great Danny Thomas, whom she traveled with to and performed with all over the country for fundraising concerts. She also supports the uh, Save the Children Foundation, Alzheimer's Association, and cancer care, just to name a few. So maybe through this uh, episode of our uh, talk show series, the Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series, The Gym Master Show Live, you had an opportunity to learn a little bit more about somebody that you admired, somebody that maybe uh, if you're watching and you're in the industry and you've worked with her, you know, I get a lot of people that say, God, I've known Julie, or I've known this one, or I've known that one for years. Matter of fact, she's one of my best friends but I learned so much more about that guest on your show. That happens. And that's a wonderful thing. I learn, you learn, we all learn together. And that's what it's all about. Great music, great inspiration, levity, love, and levity on the Gym Master Show Live. Great comments coming in as well. Juliana, thank you very much. You're a legend, Jim. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. 
I love those beautiful words she said at the end. Uh, some of those uh, talk shows and those other veteran hosts that she mentioned, Johnny Carson and uh, Mark Griffin, Mike Douglas, remember I mentioned some of them on the show, Dick Cavett, Dick Clark, uh, legends. And I appreciate her wonderful words about the Jim Master Show Live as well. It means a lot for somebody who's been on some of the major shows over the years, uh, talk shows and with hosts, really beautiful words. I appreciate them very much. Christine Clifton in North Carolina, thanks for sharing so much of your magnificent career and life with us. It was a beautiful evening together. You're a true levity. I agree, absolutely. Mary Bishop in uh, Florida says, thanks, Julie. That was great. Take care. Juanita says, um, Julie is a wonderful soul. Thank you, Jim, for another great conversation. Good night, everyone. Keep well. You as well, Juanita, a blessing. And again, truly a uh, spectacular person. Remember she was telling us the story about being on the marquee at Caesar's, Plaza, uh, Caesar's Palace in Vegas, Sinatra, and Julie Budd, Pat Henry. Incredible. There again, she is with Jim Neighbors. And of course, she mentioned Herb Ernstein. Uh, so many wonderful photos. Of course, her work with the one and only Marvin Hamlish. There's Rex Reed. These are just some of the photos. I mean, there's decades of photos, but just some of the photos that we shared on uh, tonight's show with our very special guest, the incomparable Julie Budd, legendary singer, actress, performer, entertainer extraordinaire here exclusively on our show. We appreciate her being here. I want to tell you, we have some extraordinary guests. We're going to have a lot of fun tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, Get your dreams together and write them down. You know why? Because we have a brilliant award-winning dream analyst and author, Patricia Eltage, joining us here on the show. And uh, there's a couple of dreams that I'm going to be sharing that she wants me to share, and she's going to analyze our dreams. So if you have any reoccurring dreams, dreams you've been thinking about, when I say dreams, I'm talking about not your dreams as far as your hopes and desires. I'm talking about the dreams you have when you're in bed sleeping. <laughs> Those dreams. She is a, a, an amazing dream analyst. Friday night, tomorrow night live, she's going to be our very special guest on the Jim Master Show Live. And there will be audience participation. So those of you who want to share your dreams that maybe have been reoccurring, haunting you, or just you want to learn what those dreams mean, Patricia is a uh, an award-winning expert and a dream analyst and an author. She has a new book out. She's going to be with us tomorrow on the show. I also want to let you know, Sam Harris, brilliant actor, singer, performer, Sam Harris is going to be with us live on Saturday night. That's going to be a brilliant show, Saturday night on the Jim Masters Show Live. Nikita Burstyn, wonderful uh, Broadway, off-Broadway performer, singer, dancer, actor is going to be with us on Sunday. He is absolutely amazing. We can't wait to have him on the show as well. So many incredible people. Um, we have Kristen Towles. She's going to be with us. She's a brilliant singer and an actress. She's going to be with us on Monday. We're very excited about that. On Tuesday, live from Australia, the brilliant singer who's originally from Ireland. She's going to be live from Australia. Rebecca Harkin, the Irish singer and songwriter, is going to be live from Australia. That's going to be at a special time on Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, because it's going to be noon for her the next day in Australia. So it'll be 8 p.m. this Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, yes, recognize this face, Anson Williams from Happy Days and much, much more. Uh, he's got a lot of great things to share with us. That's going to be on Wednesday of next week. We are very, very excited. And then uh, do you recognize this face? Uh, Days of Our Lives and One Life to Live and so much more. Uh, this is a brilliant actor who's going to be joining us here on the show exclusively. This is Kevin Spertus. And uh, he's got an amazing story. He played for years Dr. Craig Wesley on the soap opera Days of Our Lives. He also played Jonas Chamberlain on the ABC soap opera One Life to Live. He was also uh, as Nick 
in Friday the 13th as well, and so much more. He's had amazing roles on Broadway, and he was in Hugh Jackman's, uh, he was Hugh Jackman's actual understudy in The Boy from Oz, and on and on and on. Uh, many people, again, remember him mainly probably from his many years on Days of Our Lives and on uh, One Life to Live, but he's been on Broadway and movies and he's extraordinary. He's going to be here on Thursday of next week, which is uh, really exciting as well. So we've got some amazing people that are coming up here on the, uh, the show. And then we have wonderful author and life coach, Sterling Meyer, who's going to be live on our show a week from today. And she's got an amazing new book out and she uh, has some wonderful inspirational um, things that she wants to share with us about life and getting through life and dealing with life. It's going to be terrific. Looking forward to that. And then a week from this Saturday, we have Nikenje on the show. Broadway star Nikenje is going to be on our show live a week from this Saturday. Uh, she's all excited. She's amazing, a wonderful singer and dancer and actress from Broadway and so much more. She's a ray of sunshine. She is going to be here a week from this Saturday. So we've got a month filled with extraordinary guests from all walks of life and different backgrounds, television, film, Broadway, Hollywood, uh, inspiration and all kinds of cool guests coming up and so much more on the Gym Master Show Live. That is just uh, the guests we have remaining this week and next. We're booking all the way into March now, believe it or not. February is just about completely filled and um, we're booking into March. I do want to say that uh, if you have a suggestion for a guest, somebody that you think would like to join us on the show, we do have a lot of uh, guests popping on. They watch the show. They love it. Some of our friends are sending us guests as well and uh, all different ways guests are popping on the show and I love it. Some of them are already friends of mine that I've interviewed on television and radio over the years and they want to come on the Gym Master Show Live. Uh, if you have a suggestion for a guest, send a guest inquiry to gymmasterstv at gmail.com. That's gymmasterstv at gmail.com. That is the email address to the show. And uh, again, I know there's some of you have already sent names of people and we're contacting everybody. Um, there's so much work behind the scenes with this show, especially doing as many shows as we do and all the content and all the promotion and the booking and then all the technical aspects. It, it is we do this like it's a television show on TV. So that amount of time and attention and work uh, day in and day out goes into it. So we're catching up with everybody, but uh, we are booked all the way till March, but uh, we try to book ahead so we can promote it effectively. Um, but again, there's some shows where we also don't have a guest and we do host chat and we do a lot of fun things with the viewers as well. And we'll be doing a few more of those because I know you guys have been asking to do a host chat show. That's how I started the show. Uh, guests started popping on when they wanted to come on the show. Friends of mine first and then others told each other and they're like, oh, you got to go on the show. And I, I had fun on the show and everything, which is wonderful. Um, but I know a lot of you want to do another food episode and some other on location segments. Uh, we took the show on location several times. We're going to be doing more of that for you as well, as well as sprinkling in the guests too. And I know you love that because the relationship between the host and the viewers, in this case, uh, our levities is very important. Just like what um, Christine said in the beginning, I thought, uh, what Julie said in the beginning, which I thought was really beautiful. She had said something like, you know, it, um, the guests can be great, but the relationship between the host and the viewers is really the key to it all. The, that relationship that a host or an on-air person, radio, television, film, music, whatever it is, the relationship that we have together is really the foundation of the Gym Master Show Live. And then the guests are sort of like the icing on the cake. They're the added uh, attraction and excitement. Uh, but the main thrust of the show and the reason why the show was designed initially was the relationship between the viewers out there all around the world who have now become lovities <laughs> and, uh, and me, us. 
and then uh, we bring these guests in and that's what it's all about because I, I do this work professionally so i love chatting with all of you meeting all of you learning about all of your lives because a lot of you are very um passionate about sharing comments and inspirations and what you think about the show i think that's awesome beautiful stuff so keep it coming keep it coming sherry says uh good night jim and loveties please be safe you as well sherry bobby said uh she said i can go back to hear the rest of your announcements perfect you're more and more exciting to me dear friend jim please for me i need to call a friend i'm helping she said i can go back to hear the rest of your <laughs> i love that you're, you've got a great sense of humor bobby horowitz i love you thanks jim for a terrific show with julie she's so talented i really enjoyed the video clips and all her life stories including the backstories of her great musical career a beautiful show thank you christine and for those of you who like to see inside their homes and the chairs and the couches you got a couple of shots of her beautiful couch right <laughs> Sweet dreams, everyone. That's right. Tomorrow night, we've got an amazing show with dream analyst and author, Patricia Eltinge, live from Los Angeles. Think about the dreams that you've had uh, and join us on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV on our YouTube channel, uh, and share your dreams with us in the comments because she's going to analyze the dreams on the spot live. So if you have a dream that has been, you know, appearing every night when you're sleeping or you just want to know what the dream means maybe there's somebody in your life that keeps appearing in the dream maybe there's a dream that's haunting you maybe there's a dream that you love and or one that you can't figure out dream analyst patricia eltage is going to be here tomorrow night it's going to be incredible it was the truth thank you bobby i appreciate that very very much you guys are the best beautifully said everybody and uh, Bernadette says, stay safe and uh, stay well. And good night, uh, Jim. Good night, everyone. Thanks for a good night. Wasn't it fun when Julie and I sang uh, happy birthday together to our wonderful friend, uh, George Burns, who she had an opportunity to actually work with. Didn't you love the stories about George or, his, or she calls him Georgie. <laughs> Georgie had a great time on the Jim Masters show live tonight. He says, good night to you as well. And uh, George's birthday, I think George would have been like 125 or something if he was still with us in the flesh. He's still with us in memory, but if he was with us in the flesh, I think somebody posted 125 or something. Uh, terrific conversation this evening. Take care, and, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you, Kathy. Great show tomorrow. Again, get the dreams together. We're going to have our dreams analyzed tomorrow with the expert. It's going to be fun. Julie is a wonderful soul. Thank you, Jim, for another great conversation. Good night, everyone. Keep well. You too, Juanita. I can't believe it. she and I chatted before we went to the show. Before we start the show, I always ask every single guest, how much time do you have? You know, because we don't want to keep them too long. And sometimes there's times where I have to do a shorter show because I have other things, family and other things we have to do. So she said, oh, I have about an hour. Let's do about an hour. So we both said that. And then we just had so much fun. She and I, she let it roll. I let it roll. And we did three hours. And it didn't feel like it, right? Not at all. And uh, definitely didn't get three hours when on Sullivan, Carson, Douglas, and all the rest. You know, you get like blocks of segments. So this was really a, a stunning, epic conversation tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm glad you did. And uh, Maureen says, there's no better way to end the day than spending time with you, Jim, your fantastic guests and all of your, all the lovities. Thank you, Maureen. I appreciate that. Right back at you. I love doing the same thing with all of you. Good night, Jim and fellow lovities. Karen Campbell Green in Nova Scotia. Great show tonight, Jim. Thank you, Julie. Is such a great person. She absolutely is. It was great. I adored George Burns. Bobby, he was the best, huh? He says, good night, everybody. Love it. He's. <laughs> you got your good night from George as well. And we adore you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Bobby. Love you back. Love you back. All right, gang. We're going to wrap for this evening. It is three hours and 20 minutes. Wow. <laughs> You guys can really talk. I tell you, you're some, you're talkers. It was a pleasure having you on the show again. Great guests coming up. Terrific entertainment coming up as well. And we thank you so much for joining us on the show. Couple of things here as well. 
Uh, of course, don't forget to smile. Make sure that you smile. And there's a reason why we always say don't forget to smile. Because when you smile, um, it's just a beautiful thing. When you smile, you can share the smile with others. And uh, it's a beautiful thing when you share your smile with other people. Um, I mean, just even take a look at the smile that you see on the screen there. Um, doesn't that make you happy just looking at that? Just like having an opportunity to look at something like that? Because, you know, we haven't really seen a lot of smiles lately from a lot of people. A lot of people have been very unhappy. And there's been a lot of, of course, sadness in the world. Well, we're here to change that. New year, new, a lot of different things are new. So we want to uh, put smiles on your face uh, as much as we can, whether it's through our conversations, it's through the entertainment, um, you guys commenting and posting and sharing, uh, whatever it may be, um, putting the smiles on your faces. Uh, we try to aim for all the time. As well, in addition to you guys smiling, we always say don't forget to share the lovity as often as you can. Don't forget to find the Zen place. Mine is the ocean. And of course, with loving family and friends, that's the number one place is to be with loving family and friends. And then uh, tennis. I'm an avid cycler, swimming. I love the ocean, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, boating floating in it, walking it. We live along the coast here, so we're blessed with the ocean nearby. And of course, my work in television and radio and stage and multimedia all these years. I've uh, been blessed to have a career working uh, for a lot of different shows and stations and networks and different uh, entities with great people over the years as well. So, and of course, as we always say, very important on the Gym Master Show Live, don't forget to relax. Don't forget to breathe. Don't forget to take care of one another. Love one another. It's very, very important to do that uh, and to love yourself and breathe from the diaphragm and try to relax as much as you can. We always show this to try to show this at the end of every show. So we come down and we relax and uh, hopefully we're all inspired on the Gym Master Show Live. It's always cool having all of you here, all you smiley faces. And we appreciate it. We also always thank our friends at LMG, Lampkin Music Group, for their time and attention and their love of our show. And we really appreciate them greatly as well. Thank you to the team, Ralph and everybody at LMG. We love you guys. And we love all of you as well. Thanks so much for being with us. Christine says, a really great show tonight. And Jim, and good night, Jim. And lovely friends, see you all for the show on Dreams tomorrow. Lovely hugs on National Hug Day. That's right, National Hug Day. Big, big virtual hug, gang. Let's get in there. Come on, get in. There you go. And uh, I have tons to do, and I love being at your shows. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you very much. And Maureen says, uh, no better way to end the day than spending the time with your gym. You're fantastic guests and all your loveties. And Karen says, agree with Maureen. Good night, gang. You guys be well, take care, love you. And uh, thanks for joining us in this episode of the Gym Master Show Live. Stretch those legs, <laughs> go get something to eat, go to bed, start your day, end your day, whatever it is, depending on what time of the day it is where you are, because we do have an international audience all around the world. And we welcome you and you and you and you and you. Spread the word, tell everybody about our show, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Uh, share the lovity on our Facebook page, Gym Masters TV. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Gym Masters TV as well. Whew, I think I got it all covered. And now I'll say au revoir, sayonara, ciao, cheers, good night, Avita Zain. We'll see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We're going to talk about our dreams. It's going to be cool on the Gym Master Show Live. Good night. Mm -hmm.